All right, everybody. We are back with Teapot and Prue. There's a decent amount of commenters here as well, so I'll go ahead and let them uh, introduce themselves and everybody else. But here we are with BDSP uh, Any Percent Glitchless. Yeah, thanks, Paige. Uh, I'm Teapot, uh, everyone. This is my first time at this particular marathon. Uh, excited to be showcasing uh, this version of the game because uh, obviously a lot of you probably saw the GDQ run with Etiquette and he did the Shining Pearl side. So this is the Brilliant Diamond side. There are just a couple minor differences that we'll be getting to in the very, very end game. Uh, but in the meantime, it's another uh, very fun run. Uh, despite what some people in our community have uh, said and bullied us over. Uh, but with that being said, I want to uh, hand it over to my Brilliant glitched commentators because all three of them are glitched runners of this game which i think is hilarious so they can tell us all about the glitched run while i uh get minorly <laughs> set up for this uh take it away guys uh we're going like alphabetical order then i guess I'll, I, I guess i'm first if we're doing alphabetical <laughs> hi i'm etiquette um i have the record for this in shining pearl um and like t pat said i ran this back at sgdq yeah, I, I'm nerd. I mainly run the glitch categories of this game, but I have doubled a little bit in uh, glitch list, so I'm here to tag along. And hello, I'm Shanigans. I am a former record holder of the glitch list category, but haven't run it in a while. Very excited to see uh, see the run. Alrighty. Uh, with that being said, uh, I think we're ready to go. And all right, but just last thing. Are we naming the trainer and or the rival here? Any suggestions before it comes up real fast? I've got nothing. If if nothing, we'll uh we'll we'll try to name the Pokemon throughout the run. So we'll love to hear your suggestions on that in the chat. All right, then let's get started in three, two, one, go. Yeah, so this is a uh, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, any percent glitchless. And I'm playing on the current patch of the game, so we are very unlikely to crash the game in the first 30 seconds. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> unlike don't, what's probably don't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never thought we'd get a game with a faster crash the game percent than red blue, but here we are. Here we are. <laughs> it did happen to me once. Um, way back when it, fit, it fits in a whole twitch clip and it's like oh i should probably yeah. submit that and then i never submitted it uh, apparently this is also like the canonical version of bdsp because we actually do name the rival barry and not uh clint clint i was gonna say larry but i'm like this is <laughs> <Dude, laughs> barry, barry, barry. barry and larry <laughs> sounds like an evil team or something all right, so the first big trick of the game is to lose 10 minutes because I didn't turn the music to zero in order to have a better marathon and enjoyable experience playing this game. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with BDSP, uh, there is a very, very weird mechanic that only exists in this game because it is not a Game Freak game, it's an Ilka game. And if you turn the music to zero, it actually eliminates all the music and jingle tracks, allowing you to just advance text boxes instantaneously instead of waiting for each little da 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 dink or da 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 da. And it saves like nine to 10 minutes or so, uh, but it is pretty boring to listen to a silent game. So most people will run just like other like YouTube playlists in the background. And um, there's one community member that goes by Furiest, who has created a tool that will auto play, it'll, like watch your screen and play the tracks depending on where you are. So like right now it would be playing the Twin Leaf Town theme. And it's actually really, really cool. Uh, Etiquette's used it a whole lot. Yeah, um, but we're, we're really just gonna nice. do, yeah, we're just gonna do the regular you know, the the more classic, traditional Pokemon experience and actually, like, listen to the music <laughs> during the game. All right, so nothing's different between glitched and glitchless right now. We're gonna, we're gonna still face the Starly. 
But the first big difference will be what starter we pick. This is I'm no gonna make the final boss. I know. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna the make all boss. these. I'm gonna make all these uh, glitched jokes just because you all are actual glitched runners. You don't have much time. Like it's just mm -hmm. we're done in like six more minutes or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I'm I'm way I'm way down to talk about the glitched run for the next three hours because <laughs> it'll actually give you guys a chance to like talk about the run. But we pick Chimchar instead of Turtwig. Yeah, you pick Turtwig because it has the biggest odds of two shotting the Starly. It, it's just time saved to get the two shot here, but Chimchar is uh, like required for the run. Yeah. Uh, Chimchar and Kadabra, as uh, you'll see us use later, are very good complements to one another. Uh, in kind of the same way that the original the original routes, which was the Scyther route, would actually pick Piplup, because mm -hmm. Piplup was a better complement to Scyther, uh, but Chimchar is a better complement for uh, Kadabra overall. And I think it's just outright faster in the segments that we need to use it for. Yeah. It's a lot of the runs kind of about the second gym and Chimchar just has a way through that. With Piplup, you kind of need to catch a Pokemon like Scyther to get through the gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Piplup yeah. can do it, but it's very scary. Yeah, <laughs> and all the Abras in the forest too. Are, like, oh terrifying. my goodness. Those were actually like the, the actually uh, like the hardest fart fights of the whole game for the Scyther route was the two Abras. Yep. Yeah, just a terrifying fight, honestly. You you miss Rock Tomb and you're just outright dead. Like, whose idea was it to give every single Abra in this game an electric or grass type move? Yeah, it was it's actually really Because the Trader School Abras have Shockwave. Yeah. Or no, no, was it Charge Beam? It's Charge Beam, yeah. Oh, even worse. <laughs> I remember when that was like the first thing it was like, yeah, pick up work up the TM that you get for beating the two Abras with the electric moves. And everyone's like, why are we doing this? <laughs> but yeah, the game's been out for how many months now? Eight, eight, nine months. And obviously it's gone through a lot of iterations, but it certainly is starting to feel like this is probably the like final iteration of the um as far as we know, the final iteration of the run is using the Kadabra. Yeah, this route seems like really solid, at least like as a whole. Almost no encounters on the first route. Not too bad. My last, uh, my last, oh, last pra or, or I should say my first practice run, which was on Tuesday. Uh, I actually used the date, uh, August 16th, which is technically a high encounter day date. Uh, there's a list on Serebi that shows which days are high encounter rate days, and then we usually pick ones that are not. Uh, in this case, I have picked June 9th. Not for the reason you think, but because it's actually my mom's birthday is June 9th. <laughs> uh, I am going to nickname the Chimchar. Monkey. Monkey. Monkey, because it's a monkey run. I remember to do it. I was almost smashing B. <laughs> but yeah, June 9th is my mom's birthday, and it happens to be a low encounter date. Uh, so we we're just less likely to get encounters, but boy, oh boy, can you still get 10 encounters before Rorik. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, but on Tuesday, which is August 16th, I intentionally chose to run August 16th, even though it was a high encounter day, because that was my dad's birthday. <laughs> so Maybe you got the job good faster or something. <laughs> you know... I did get first encounter Machop. Hey, there you go. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have hit the frame. I think it was only six or seven wild encounters, which I think is pretty average, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, one of the really unfortunate things about this game is there's no step immunity. So um, if oh, you get yeah. an encounter, you can get an encounter immediately on the next step. Um, and so you can get to like the last patch of grass with no encounters and then leave the last patch of grass with three. Uh, that is absolutely something that can happen. Very unfortunate, but sort of is what it is. Yeah. The worst, I don't know if we figured it out. Like, does the bike generate more encounters? So biking through grass? Kind of. Encounters are based on the tile that you walk on. Um, and if you do something like walk on the seam between two tiles, it counts like every step counts as two tiles. 
Ugh. Um, so you're doing like double the encounter chance or whatever. So you kind of like if you watch, um, if you watch someone like me do movement in the early game, I do a lot of D-pad movement through grass just to try to make sure I'm not like walking on the seams between tiles. But um, you know, usually it's not too too bad. What's weird is that if you use the D-pad to uh, run or walk in the overworld, it's not exactly like, say, Oras, where it will snap you onto the grid. It only half snaps you onto the grid. So it'll put you on the grid in the left-right direction if you're using the D-pad left or right. But if you're still halfway in between the tiles, you know, north to south, you will still be running across the seam of those tiles unless you engage uh, both directions with the D-pad. Unfortunately, I'm using a Procon, and the D-pad on this, for this game specifically, is really bad. Um, so I'm going to minima... I'm basically never going to use the D-pad in the overworld. I'm just confident enough in my stick movement. But it's also not as freeform as, say, like, Sword and Shield, where you have, like, this full 360-degree movement. There are, like... There are, like... 24 cardinal directions that you can move. So it's a lot easier to move exactly up, exactly left, exactly down, etc. And now we learn how to catch a Bidoof. What's really hilarious is that... practice here, come on. Yeah. And Lucas digs into our bag to get the Pokeballs. And he even does it the slow way, too. He doesn't use the X button to just yeah. throw the ball. All right. Easy. Old. Now, but oh. is, it, is, it is important to know that he gives us Pokeballs here. So if we encounter a shiny three steps from now, we'll actually have the ability to catch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> Remember that time? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, first battle here, this one is actually one of the harder battles in the early game. Um, basically, the you, you're you only level five here, uh, which means your best move is uh, Scratch, I believe. Um, and this Starly can do either four, six, or seven damage, depending on what defense you have. I have um, high defense because it's only doing four to me. That's yeah. perfect. So it, that makes this fight a bit you know, safer, um, not necessarily any faster or anything like that, but it is um, safer. You, you're you going to have to heal less. Uh, you're risking critical hits less. Um, that was one very aggressive Starly, by the way. Yeah, it's uh, actually faster because don't get growled and lose your attack. Yeah, exactly. This looks, this looks like the exact same Chimchar Ooh. I had on Thursday. I'm probably relaxed, which is fine. Yeah, a little bit slow. Yeah, the Chimchar's special attack and attack are really the two stats that matter the most. Um, mm -hmm. Speed is nice, but there's really only a couple of things that you're going to get outsped by. You lose like a turn and a half or so. Not so even. it's not too, too bad. Yeah. This is the PSR even, marathon. Like, the... Should we explain Blaze? <laughs> <laughs> explain Blaze. Ah. They, they've probably heard it 15, 20 times, but yeah, this is doing more damage than it would normally do right now. I will have to heal this turn. Yeah, unfortunate. Yeah, below one third HP or exactly one third HP, and you get a fifty percent boost to fire moves. Because if Chimchar you're in Blaze for this fight, you can crit Oko uh, these Bidoofs, but you can't uh, without it. Yeah. But this is actually looking like a good Route One. Weirdly enough, the this first route, technically Route Two Hundred Two, has some. Pretty scary fights, especially that Starly, if you get high rolled or crit. Uh, the Shinx upcoming here is also particularly bad. Uh, I've gotten high rolled once or twice and on like good pace where I've had like no encounters and I get real mad about it. It's just like, man, it's like the first three trainers of the game and they're, they're trainers you could all die to, except for like the Bidoof, but you could get high rolled on the Bidoof and I think I've done that once. Yeah, or you just risk a not heal and get 116 or whatever. I think this thing also has uh, yes. thunder shock. Yes, I, I got it. I got a good roll. I got a good roll. Us so usually two, uh, two normal embers leaves the shanks on one HP, 
and I got that one extra HP and damage, so I got the two shot instead of a three shot. It's actually much harder than you think. Yeah, damage is random in Pokemon. There's 16 different values that you can roll, and usually one of them is like one damage higher, so... Typically, it's like a 1 in 16 chance to get that roll, but you get two chances to do it. 1 in 16 you... high and low rolls will come into play later in the run, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Sure will. All high rolls this run, let's go. <laughs> all, all rolling high. Uh, and that's the thing, with and with most Pokemon runs, we want to make sure that we can kill even with low rolls, mm -hmm. with some exceptions. And we're usually trying to stay out of high roll or crit range um, for the opponents. So usually us doing crits or high rolls tends to not matter. Might save a turn here or there, uh, but we never plan on it. Yeah. Also, big strat, skipped work up. Great idea. <laughs> yeah. I believe work up is what? Increases attack and defense? Uh, attack and special attack by one yeah. stage. But, but it's the offensives. Yeah, if anyone knows the originals, that's um, where you get hidden power. Um, hidden power, obviously, in Generation 8 is no longer a thing, at least not for uh, every Pokemon. It's still a thing for Unknown. Um, and so they replaced it with Work Up, which used to be kind of in the route, but um, it ends up you know, just wasting time. Unfortunately, our main Pokemon for the run uh, doesn't learn Work Up. Otherwise, it would help. Uh, X items are gotten very late in the run. So, yeah. or not... Not late in the run, but like after a lot of fights that you really wish you had X items. Um, so work up would be nice, but it's just unfortunately Cadaver doesn't learn it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the cost of two extra trainers, just is completely unworth it. Yes, I did save for the first rival fight of the game. Barry is actually pretty mean in this game. Surprise. I hate that this fight, the strat for this fight is Starly Ember times two. Or Ember times like times three to four, three, yeah. and then oh. Piplup Ember times twelve. Come on, quick attack! Uh, okay. Hate that's, it. That's fine. At least I get the guaranteed three shot because I got at least one blaze hidden. So you always assume you're outsped by Starly simply because it has quick attack. So you never risk it, even if you might outspeed. I might be outsped by Piplup because I'm anticipating I'm a relaxed. Uh, Chimchar, which is minus speed. Uh, I am very outsped by Piplup. I only have 13 speed, and the Piplup is 14. Yeah, it's extremely low at this level. Jeez. I think I got growled once, so I'm gonna yeah. scratch. One growl. Uh, I'm gonna Ember here in case I get crit into, uh, into Blaze. Let's see, are you doing five damage to me? You're only doing four. Oh yeah, that's right, I'm plus. It's also funny here, Burn's normally like really slow because you have to watch the animation, but it's not that bad on this fight because you get so much damage from just the burn. Yeah, the burn tick is almost as much as you do normally. Yeah. <laughs> oh, nice run. <laughs> Good snapback yep, on the yep, controller. Yep, nice snapback. I typically only get snapbacks in the overworld and on that particular menu, I'm usually much safer uh, in the move selection. Because yeah. if you select the wrong move, sometimes that can be fatal. Yeah, the menu in this game is really interesting. You'll do a lot of uh, double inputs where you hit up on both sticks or like down or right on both sticks, and it'll uh, it'll give you like two inputs. So you can do that for a lot of the menuing. So it's pretty fun. Like menuing in Pokemon games is a big thing, and this game has like a pretty cool menuing system. The menus actually feel very clean in this game yeah. compared to, say, a game like Let's Go, which can be quite awkward at the at the medium of times. But that was a that was actually a pretty good berry fight, and I've only had two encounters up to this point, so this is actually a pretty decent run. Yep. Hug that wall to avoid that trainer. And now we're going to pick up our first HM of the game, but they're not HMs anymore. Um, because HMs have not existed in a while, we will instead uh, be able to just use HMs in the Poketech. So long as we have the correct badge for it, which at the moment we don't for Rock Smash. 
Yeah, it's a really cool mechanic. Basically, like canonically, the the Poketch will um, call a wild Pokemon to help you out. Um, so you don't even have to have a Pokemon that can use the move, um, but they still, you know, because this is a remake, they still have you go to the location that it was in the originals. Yeah, I actually really like this feature. Um, so if we ever wanted to use Rock Smash or Cut or Fly or Surf, we don't need to have a Flyer or a Cutter or a Surfer in our party. Just yeah. a, a... And it's funny because the Pokemon Company figured, hey, we use a Badoo for everything. So Badoo and the Barrel <laughs> is like five or six of the HMs anyways. Yeah, shout outs to the Barrel when you're surfing. Those were good times. Very good times. I wonder if the Babarel bridge glitches in this game, <laughs> since we have lots of glitched runners. Uh, if you're wondering, I am now trying to find a Pokemon that is yeah. not a Geodude. Yeah. Jim Char unfortunately has uh, some issues with the first gym, uh, but there's a Pokemon on this route that is a little bit easier to get through the gym with. Hopefully we see it here, but that's not the only reason we're catching it. Yeah. Um, so the, the strat in the originals is kind of, uh, get to Monferno, um, mm -hmm. or, you know, one strat yeah. in the originals, I should say, is get to get to Monferno, um, without fighting a lot of wilds and literally every single trainer that you can before this, it's not possible to hit Monferno. Um, Thanks, exper scaled experience. <laughs> yeah, experience in this game yeah. is scaled, so the higher level you are, the less experience you gain. Um, and so as you start getting over leveled, you know, you're getting less and less experience and can't actually hit level 14. Um, Chimchar does learn power up punch at level tw uh, 12, but it's just not quite enough. Um, and as you're going to see, Rourke's team is very mean. So uh, yeah. this Machop is going to do do wonders for us. Yeah, the level is random as well, right? Uh, for the Machop. Yes. Yeah, five to, five to seven, and I got a five, which is the worst. Okay, that's what um, I thought. I assumed... It doesn't sure. matter for Rorik specifically, but it can make a big difference on the first trainer in the mm -hmm. gym that we're going to use to gain experience for Rorik. Um, if you have a level five, you're just at much lower attack stat and can be a bigger pain. Additionally, the Chimchar only got, what was it, 39 EXP? I'll need to be Monferno for the Mars fight, and that's not enough experience unless I lead Chimchar to get full experience on the Geodude in, on the first trainer in the gym. So we just automatically lose a turn because we need to do this hard switch to get the EXP required. So six and seven is much, much preferred over five, but five is totally doable. Six, level six actually has a little quirk to it that I find really funny. Um, because sure of the does. way scaled, because of the way scaled experience works, the order that you KO Pokemon can sometimes matter. Um, because like if I KO something at level ten and then hit level eleven to KO the second thing, I'm going to be gaining different experience than if I did it the other way around. Um, and there's a double fight in Jubilife later on that if you KO the Wurmple first and then the Zubat, you gain one more experience than if you KO the Zubat first and then the Wurmple. And that one experience, if you hit level six, or if you get a level six Machop, that one experience is the difference between you evolving on time and not. Which is bananas to me. Yeah. Um, spoiler, experience is extremely tight in this run, if you've never seen it. Yeah, it's actually, uh, particular with the wake fight, that'll be yep. coming up in a little bit, but we'll explain that more in the probably mid-game section. Yeah, so here is... I led Chimchar simply because I only got level five Machop experience and I need full experience on this Geodude. Yeah. I'm also at lower HP, so typically I get done, I get hit with seven damage. I'm gonna not risk it because I don't think high roll <laughs> is eight. So this makes yeah. this fight annoyingly slow. Uh, I focused in, this is like the crit. only, okay, good, nice roll, low roll. This is like the only fight in all of Pokemon where it is required to critical hits. So that's why we use focus energy to up our chances to one and two. And I got neither of those. Uh, I'm gonna actually not wanna burn all of my potions. So as the fight drags on, I'm gonna play a little a little riskier and riskier around high rolls. Yeah, okay, there's a defense curl, which is nice if we just hit the 50-50. After a focus energy, you're 50 50 to crit because it boosts your crit rate by two stages. Yeah, and I critical hits have... ignore.
critical hits ignore uh, defensive stat increases, so all those defense curls mean nothing if we just get a freaking critical hit. Yeah. Still not. I've missed it matter, one and four, but thankfully the fourth one didn't matter. Yeah. I can save a turn if I get it here, though. Save save, save a turn if, if I get it here, though. <laughs> I, it, it's hap. It, we're, we'll get it. Actually, it should kill from here. Anyways. Yeah, unless it goes for hard. Yo, last one. One out of six. Heck yeah. Woo! I just boosting your luck for Rourke. All right. We are on to Rourke, which is like one of. It is definitely one of the biggest walls of the early game. So yeah. Now I will lead Machop. Also, learning a very good move there, Revenge. Uh, if you move second with it. Uh, I don't. Do you have to take damage? I think you do. Yeah, to get hit. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if you, you take if you damage, take damage it in power. Right. Goes from sixty to one hundred and twenty, and we will use that to KO the Geodude and his ace, the Cranidos, because the Cranidos has no defense but a lot of attack. Yeah. Basically, um, so low kick is a variable power move. It does more damage uh, the higher weight the target is, um, and so. Against a Geodude, low kick is only 40 power, so we can get 120. We can literally, Revenge does three times as much. Um, yeah, that's good. Low kick against Cranidos is 60, so we can still two shot the Cranidos with two low kicks, but, you know, getting a one hit with Revenge is just way better. So I missed that two shot, which meant that that second roll was a little bad. I didn't want to take more rollout damage, so I did switch to low kick just to tap it in. He can't heal on that turn because he's locked into rollout, and I don't lose any inputs because I have to low kick the Onyx, which is already 120 base power, so we don't bother with revenge on Onyx. Yeah, and it, it removes the small but completely possible chance that uh, the one attacking move it has, Rock Throw, misses. Um, if it misses, then you don't get the boost, so... That's so I don't track IVs, but I do keep an eye on stats every once in a while. That level up, I keep track of my defense, which is 16, which means Headbutt will typically do 13 points of damage. Uh, Headbutt does have a 30% chance to flinch us, but we can survive two, barring a high roll. And I got flinched twice in a row. Classic game. That is yeah. really unfortunate. Yeah, snap um, back again. So yeah, and so and now I have to heal double yeah, because double I actually have decently low defense. That's a high roll again. So he's high rolled me twice already. Oh. oh. This is really bad. It's Actually, if he flinches me again, uh, I can't continue because of the amount of healing items already. Yeah, you thought throwing a Pokemon with the same attacks as Gyarados on the first gym would be reasonable? Right. Well, I would not exactly call that a good roar, Ooh. but I didn't die. Yeah, it was close. No potions as well, so... No potions is kind mind. of a bummer. Thankfully, we are picking up super potions right here. Yeah, true. Um, I like having one potion left for Byron, so I can do a good, like a cool Byron strat. But that is now off the table, unfortunately. Um, just throwing it out there by using a potion instead of healing to full on Byron, I'm more likely to get a blaze hit, saving not only one turn but usually like three. But that's like off the table now. But we did I mean, it! Hooray! <laughs> oh boy. All right, so um, now that we have one badge, um, the shop has repels and super potions. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab some of those as well as some other healing items here. A um, couple escape ropes for later on in the run. Uh, and then we are going to get our new main Pokemon. So uh, Machop, obviously the star of the show in the first gym, um, but also conveniently the exact Pokemon you need to do this in-game trade. A save day, save two tiles of movement because she walked up towards me. 
Um, yeah, this... it, w it works out so nicely that Machop is the g like the gym defeater and the trade Pokemon at the same time. Yeah, it's it's super nice. Um, this Abra here does have fixed stats. The stats are not amazing. Not um, great. But, you know, we'll be talking about the, the stats quite a bit probably. Um, but basically, it's a quiet nature with very mediocre IVs in every stat. Um, so Yeah, it's 11 in special attack. Yeah, quiet is plus special 30... attack. Yeah, quiet is plus special attack minus speed. Um, so it, it's got mediocre special attack but it's plus nature and then uh what tpat was saying is it's got 31 iv speed so um even though it is minus speed it is very fast for having minus speed i will say it's nice have, like when you run these traded mons just having the set stats makes routing so much more oh, manageable yeah. so it is kind of nice uh that you'll always at least have the same stats so you don't have to always be calculating everything based off of that It's this is like the more complex version of the Candy Floss route in Sword and Shield, because Candy Floss is always to touted as like a very beginner friendly route uh, in Sword and Shield. This has the same advantages that Candy Floss does with the fixed stats, so we know exactly how much damage we're doing and how much damage we're taking. But we have to be a lot more careful about our experience, and it's not just the Chimchar; it is now the Abra. We don't want to over level. While at the same time, we want to make sure we have enough EXP for Chimchar in certain cases. Yeah, there's, uh, the Abra has, like, four oh, or five different uh, EXP thresholds it's trying to hit during the run. Um, most of them are, I want to be at least this level, and one of them is, I need to not hit that level. Um, so... This is kind of awkward. This is the first time in a long, long, long time I actually got poisoned on this fight. Uh, I think I have to just outright heal that. Yeah. It's kind of a bummer. I will do it the next... Well, I have to do it at some point. <laughs> you can just do it in a repel menu. There are no repel menus, though, because... Oh, can, I'm done. It just, yeah, you've already it just repelled. prompts us. So yeah, yeah. I do just have to outright open my menu. And unfortunately, I do have to burn already my first super potion because of that. It's just a bit unfortunate I've taken literally this much damage already. Uh, I'm going to do that before we get to the first spinner of the game, because that's really fun. Uh, we do have antidotes for this situation. Shout out to the ball capsules at one point saving the glitch run. <laughs> All right, who wants the amazing task of explaining spinners of this game? Yes. Oh, my goodness. This, this is great. Yes. I, I love spinners in this game so much. <laughs> Somebody please explain them so I don't literally rage quit having Someone to Someone just them. post the clip of Echi hitting the spinner in Galactic <laughs> Base, and we don't really need an explanation for spinners. That will surface. Yeah. All right. So basically, uh, spinners in this game are random. They're just going to spin whenever the heck they want. Um, you can influence the direction they spin. So if you know how spinners work in like generations three and four, basically if you run past the spinner, or if you run near the spinner, they'll turn immediately um, in the direction that you were running. And it's the exact same thing, except we don't tell it when to spin. It's just, that's where it's gonna spin next. And so you'll see like T-Pat just ran below the spinner um, and then started walking. And that was to influence it to spin down next because yes, the spinner can choose to spin the direction they are already looking, mm -hmm. and that will basically make them not spin. So, um, you know, there's going to be a lot of a lot of that kind of like walk and then run kind of movement. Um, most of the time, it is don't run because you'll make it worse. Um, it's not necessarily <laughs> I. E. The like etchy clip. yeah, i.e. the etchy clip. Um, it's not really something that you can influence them to look in a certain direction that you want it's more don't make it so that they're going to turn the direction you need them not to 
Now, one, depending on my comfort level, um, I can try to do some very creative spinner passes where they might be looking in a direction that I that is favorable to me. And thus, I want them to keep looking in that direction, and I'll like run alongside them to keep them looking in a certain direction, and then walk past them. Because if you continue to run past them, they'll have an option to what I call the gotcha. Uh, they'll like look and spin at you. But if you're walking, they won't do that mechanic. So you'll run to keep them looking in the direction you want them to look, and then quietly tiptoe past them. Uh, and it works for a handful of spinners. And um, I'll probably do it when the experience doesn't matter, where, you know, where if I miss it, it's not like, oh, I have to reset. <laughs> okay, just hit through confusion. Oh, boo. Missed a two-shot range on top of it. Thankfully, uh, hitting through confusion is a 67% chance, not 50 yeah, they add, they change a lot of the status effects in Gen 8 because paralysis is I think it's only half speed instead of quartered, and I think they changed the rate to hit through on that as well. Did a lot of uh, status changes. All right, so far so good. Oh, we've also met Team Galactic. They're they're bad guys, apparently. Yeah. Also, coming up on, I believe, the first... Well, the first spinner acceptance of the run would kind of be the way to say it. <laughs> the first spinner acceptance, and correct me if I'm wrong, Etiquette, the only optional we face. Uh, the gym trainer. Is yeah, and works gym. Yeah. Yeah. So we fight two optionals on purpose. Um, and this one is one of them. This one gives us, well, not this trainer. The the spinner inside the, the one. Valley Wind Works gives us just enough experience to hit Monferno. And doing the Mars fight as not Monferno is uh, yeah. not pleasant. <laughs> not even possible. Yeah, it's possible. It just wouldn't be fun. <laughs> yeah, especially considering how few uh, healing items I have right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just fight this first trainer. One, because they are they only have one Pokemon, right? Yeah. Yeah, so yep. they're a pretty fast fight. Uh, you can just do them, like, super fast. You would have to wait for them to spin twice anyway. Because um, mm -hmm. you have to pass them on two different sides. And that could take longer than the fight on its own. Uh, and then, on top of that, the experience to level up to 14 is really important. It also, crucially, doesn't give... The Abra enough experience to, yeah. <laughs> to over level later. Uh, <laughs> so. It's just so wild that you're trying to get enough experience for Chimchar, but not too much experience for Abra. Yeah. The uh, the t the tight the the tight wire act is pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, how fine it is, but how perfect it is uh, mm -hmm. as of as of now. Yeah, the second reveal for the like whole experience routing. Uh, traded Pokemon don't obey you at certain levels. Um, it's this... based off of how many badges that you have. Um, and this whole thing is about the Wake fight. And when you defeat Wake, level 50 Pokemon will obey you. Uh, and you're, but... you're golden from there. Yeah, so like you're kind of golden after the Wake fight. But for Wake specifically, only at level 30 obeys. Uh, so it's pretty crucial not to have a traded Pokemon uh, that is level 31. And uh, that won't happen. <laughs> There's yeah. a reason why there aren't trade alt mains in this game. Yeah. yeah, you have to go so far to be it's, able to get level 31. It's just nearly impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the other thing about specifically this route is we want to be level 30 when we start the wake fight, but we need yeah. to not be 31 <laughs> before the end of it. And so <laughs> that just the there's three Pokemon in the fight. It's a Gyarados, a Quagsire and a Floatzel. Um, the Gyarados and the Quagsire give enough experience that there is a 79 experience buffer. Um, so it's you have much. to, yeah, it's not much at all. So you have to get your experience within this 79 experience window in order to start at 30 and not over level during the fight. It's disgusting because like any small change you make, because again, 
experience is scaled. So it's not just like, oh, I gained 100 extra experience here. Let me let me not gain 100 later. Um, that 100 that you gain now might be 80 later or it might be 90 later. Like, you don't know uh, without doing the math. So um, also, this is a fight. This fight sucks. This, yeah. this fight sucks. Um, so remind me, how fast is Perugly? I heard it's faster than actual jets. <laughs> um... I believe it's faster than anything you can have at this point, matching its level. Yeah. Okay, I have high defense, which is actually really good. It's gonna it's gonna save me from having to heal uh, an extra time. I know probably is faster than 110 base speed because I know it outspeeds like Gengar and stuff. It's like such a now. fast Pokemon. It's pretty strong too. Yeah. The cool thing you can do to outspeed fast Pokemon is to use your priority moves. Actual cheating. Yeah, and the other thing that's really, really nice about this fight is, or the way that T-Pack went through the fight, is he's leaving the fight in Blaze. Um, yep. The the next fight that we go go through... Not by choice. Well... <laughs> not by yeah. choice, but it helps. Uh, the, the next fight that we go to, we can save... We can both save a turn and save some danger by being in Blaze, so... I'm actually just stoked that my defense was so high it saved a healing item. Uh, and unfortunately, my Orenberry actually procced early, but thankfully, didn't need it. This is pretty much the only fate that you can actively do blaze strats, right? There's not really that many spots in this game that you can use blaze pretty well. I guess later on, on the. Um, not gonna uh, risk that one. The I'll sixth gym leader as well. Yeah, I, it's it's mostly like uh, you know, mid fight I might sneak a blaze hit in kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. The really, like, Byron, Byron, Byron gym leader um, fight it's preferred to have blaze, uh, but not necessary. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm just not going to be able to get it because I don't have any potions anymore. Yeah, could pick up some orange berries and see if that would help. Yeah, two of them would be a potion. You could always sneak in a potion buy, like on the Celestic shop. Mm hmm. I think shout outs to Kizron for realizing that you could fight these two trainers individually, unlike in Gen 4 when they are re a required double fight. Yeah, this fight sucks in the double because there's a Pachirisu on one side. Your double partner's a Chansey, so it's doing nothing. But the Pachirisu. Uh, can paralyze you it has like static i think you just have all these like issues with the fight but uh, the other big issue is that it has attack dropping moves it has baby doll eyes which is the priority attack dropping move mm -hmm. and charm which drops your attack by two stages yeah but now because you can just enter this fight in blaze one it just okos the beauty fly you don't have to deal with that range it has uh gust as well which is really strong um, but just gets okayed with Ember, which is really nice. And what's amazing is that as you enter a turn of forest, Cheryl's like, I'll keep your Pokemon healed. You will get a full Pokemon Center heal after every wild encounter and every battle. Mm -hmm. So even though I just had 13 HP exiting that fight, I am now fully healed going into the Pachirisu. Yep, which is perfect because that's what you want to be, fully healed for this fight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So we yeah. want to see Quick Attack. That's the best, uh, the best iteration of this fight. Uh, I am also outsped, so if I get charmed, it actually is real bad because it will okay. charm me first, as it did there. Spark no paralyzes. Nice. That's, that's that's fine. Charms a bit annoying. Thankfully, it doesn't have um, it doesn't have static. It has pickup as an ability, which mm -hmm. is really funny because if you get paralyzed and your cherry berry heals you it picks up the cherry berry mid battle <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny yeah losing uh, more in time. the in the piplup routes when you're when you have pluck you could pluck the extra cherry berry off of it if you get uh paralyzed again now doing something that the uh the piplup route couldn't ever dream of doing walking no between way. these two trainers <laughs> <laughs> So this one's actually faster to do as a double battle because the Abras are two shots, but with Power Punch, 
we can win the double fight in three turns. Mm -hmm. It's also a little bit faster not having to watch two starting battle, two end of battle animations. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It, it's the actually... It's actually, so it's possible that this is a four turn fight if you have bad attack, um, just because you do about half with power up punch the first time. Um, and so you could end up low rolling on the, the final hit. And even doing a four turn double fight is faster than two two turn fights. Oh. Uh, just because of the, that start and ends uh, sequence, like Shen was saying. Now, if you get a nice chancy, it does use what is it, disarming voice, so it can yeah. it can do some chip damage to help you out. Um, that was not at all dangerous. Uh, but most importantly, our Abra has finally hit level 16 and is almost usable. Uh, it's it will now have an actual attacking move. It will not just have teleport. Won't obey us though. It still won't obey us because even with Rorik's gym badge, we still only have obedience through level 10. Yeah, it's all the even numbered gym badges, I believe, that give yep. you the uh, level boost. So the second badge is 30, the uh, fourth badge is 50, badge yeah. six is 70, and then the eighth badge is level 100. So you have to at least get through the uh, the second gym before it'll start obeying you. And that's why Chimchar is the starter Pokemon. Yeah. The second gym, by the way, is actually so annoying with uh, Chimchar. Like, it's, it's not dangerous, but you can just lose so much time. Yeah, it's just like, it's frustrating because uh, if you had Flame Wheel, which we're one level off of learning it now, right? Yeah, one or two. We're, we're getting close. Uh, yeah, two, because you, you level up on the next one. Right, you level up on the first fight. If, if we were one level or, well, if we had the extra two levels for Flame Wheel, every single Pokemon in the gym would just be a one shot. You just blitz <laughs> through here. Everything goes down the Flame Wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, however, every single Pokemon on this gym, until we learn Flame Wheel, is a two shot. It's just so annoying because it's like, Oh, it lived on one HP. Yeah. Oh, it lived on one HP. So mm -hmm. close. So getting crits or getting the ranges can save you so much time. Yeah. Uh, but as we'll see on the very next fight, getting stun sport a whole lot can waste even more time. This is the best version of the fight. The Cherubi is always a two shot, but if it, because it has chlorophyll, so it outsped us now. That's very funny. I've never been outsped by the Cherubi. Um, oh, uh, yeah. However, the sun is set up, so now we actually have a chance to Oko the Rosalia, whereas normally it's always a two-shot, and if it uses its healing moves, it could be a three-shot. You know, like Leech Seed and Giga Drain. Yes, I got it! I got the one-shot. All, right. All right, so another funny thing, you actually have a little bit more experience because you were a level 5 Chimchar and had to do that first fight. You don't yep. normally yep. hit level 18 here. <laughs> oh. You hit it after the Rosalia, usually, not on it. Or not before it. So that actually probably wouldn't have killed if you didn't have a level five in the yeah. job. See, it all comes full circle. Like this oh, the experience in this game is stupid. <laughs> yeah, had less experience this, and now you have this more. This is the stupidest fight though. So this fight is three Badoo. So level 14, a level 13, a level 15, and they're all ranges. They're all not very good ranges. So you could win the fight in three turns, but it could also take six or more if you start getting stun sport. Since I'm hold, still holding the cherry berry, it's a lot safer, and I did Good. get an Oko right off the bat, which is great. Uh, if you get, if you do this fight in five turns, you're you're usually happy. You're like, okay, five turn fight, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. I've gotten two, I'm two for two so far. Okay. The 15 is like, I've, I think I've hit the range without a crit like one time. It is a very and, hard to hit range. Yeah, I've gotten yeah, a special crit. attack dependent too. So, so there's the Stun Spore. If you don't have the Cherry Berry, it likes to use Rest, thus healing, and then you could be fully paralyzed. Uh, it has Sleep Talk, so it could re-Stun Spore you, even if you're already Stun Spore. It's just, it's just a mess. That is, that is literally the most perfect thing that's gone in this run so far, is a four-turn Badoo fight. Yeah, yeah, that was really nice. The collision in this gym, awful. <laughs> yeah, I, I try, try not to talk about it, but all the walls are made of glue, so. Yeah, they really are. 
Yeah, because uh, the map in this game is a one-to-one -one recreation of the original Diamond and Pearl, so combining that with stick movement, yeah, it makes things a little difficult. <laughs> yeah, not a tile-based game, so it's very, very awkward. Anyway, it's funny though because here. like you can you can bounce off of other NPCs no problem if you're not like perfectly lined up with them, mm -hmm. but it's just not the same like friction mechanic to the environment. Level 19 and flame wheel. Forgot to check my attack set. You had 37. 37, yeah. That's okay. But actually, I might be able to save a uh, super effective text if all goes well on Gardenia. All right, so now, and now we have flame wheel. Hooray! Yeah. 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 This and next pick is a lot smoother. The funny thing is, like, so those first three fights you know, obviously take a, a few turns. This one's a one turn fight, but whether or not you save a menu is like solely based on what happens here. Yeah, it's 30%, I, right? I yeah. do have to menu automatically because I've lost the cherry berry, but I oh, did get right, poison right. pointed. Uh, it's just a little slower because now I have to use an extra hey, item. Hey, there it is. Yeah, it's 30% to get poisoned with poison point and flame wheels contact, so I'm lucky. No biggie. We. We take that risk just because we can Oko. Yeah, so, it's better than giving the Roselia a turn. So we will give that to you. Uh, and I will give that to you. And I'm actually gonna just outright use that and that. Yeah, there's a pretty neat thing in this game. Uh, this is, I think, the only Pokemon game that does it mechanically. But what you can do is equip items on your secondary Pokemon and then swap the items between both of your Pokemon in the menu. So this run will utilize that quite a bit. You'll you'll have like choice specs on one Pokemon and uh, wise you know, glasses. different items like wise glasses or metronome on another. And it's like, okay, this fight needs choice specs. So you'll swap it to the Pokemon and then this fight and needs metronome. You'll swap that. And it's really fast. Like most of the yeah. menus are actually very clean in this game. Now for this fight, we can go for a plus one range, but the best case scenario is that I outright two shot with Mach Punch, thus eliminating the range, and I never had to use a super effective move on the Chariot V. So I did get to save a it's super effective text and also made the fight perfectly safe. It's it's so funny because it's like you could get to like that 14 in 16 range range, which is exactly what I'm at. But that's like the perfect situation to be to just like two shot with power up punch. So you you almost almost always just go for two power up punches and hope it kills. Yeah, now this Roselia just kind of drops, which is amazing. This Roselia can be mean, and usually Nuzlockers figure it out really fast because that Rose Raid has technician ability. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's really mean. Hooray, I just gold splitted that Gardenia. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's, now that's that we... what happens when you get three one shots in the gym. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, now that we have two badges, we can start using Kadabra, but we do still have to be careful. If we just start using Kadabra from now on, we will over level before we hit wake. So um, we are going to it's going to look kind of weird, uh, but we're going to be sort of like splitting our time between Kadabra and Chimchar for the next basically until like right after the next gym. Yeah, yeah, next 40 minutes or so. It actually makes the route really fun because you're doing a true uh, dual main. Dual main. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the experience system in this game. So first things first, uh, I don't think we have access to it yet, but you can deposit Pokemon in the box whenever you want. Um, kind of similar to uh, well, uh, Let's Go, where you can kind of just deposit whenever you need to mm -hmm. change your Pokemon out or whatever. Uh, so that can be used to skip having Kadabra with you for fights, which would skip getting it experience. And then you can also uh, not use it in battle because you get less experience, I believe, for Pokemon that aren't used yep. in the battle. Um, you still get experience, but just not as much. There's the berry swap, I think. or No, that's Pokemon swap, right? Both. Um, yeah, yeah. And then going to shop here for some very good items. Uh, this is the herb shop. Herbs are really good because they're cheap and happiness doesn't matter in Pokemon speedruns. It's, it's like I always say, happiness or friendship is a waste of time. Yeah, it especially is a waste of time in uh, some of the other Pokemon games because it literally... Well, this, game, uh, 
Yeah, it's awful. It's <laughs> true. Game. Yeah, it is really bad in this game too. You're right. Shed, I gotta tell you something. I, I DM'd Etiquette this the other day. Uh, my Monferno Power of Love lived on Cyrus in practice. <laughs> <laughs> it literally so never happened, happened before. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, friendship nope. matters. It's it's so it's so much faster to love you. <laughs> it's it was so, it was so funny because I'm like, doesn't Monferno so like funny. die like three times in the run? How does it have high <laughs> enough? I must have gotten so many of those like 128 step ticks. Yeah, because it's like I think it's 50 50 to gain a friendship point every 128 steps. You don't lose oh. that much for wiping unless you die to something that's way higher level than you. I think it's only minus one uh, for getting KO'd, but it's like minus 30 if you get KO'd by something 20 levels higher. Because it, it's it's like they punish you for the like, I'm going to send out my level five and heal. <laughs> it's like they know, the Pokemon know. I really don't want to use another super potion for that. Yeah. I'm I'm going to take the executive decision to not heal that off. Nah, don't don't heal that. I I think just be, just because of my potion situation um I'm going to let that be. Usually you just want to heal the full before the next fight. The only thing that's all that's kind of a problem is that remember I have decently slow speed and the upcoming scum tank is one of those speed thresholds that's usually like really easy to hit. If you're like neutral speed you're good. If you're minus speed, you're usually good. But I have pretty low speed. Um, I'd like to see 39 speed on my next level up. You had a really good bulk, I think, right? It might still be okay regardless. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a little bit more difficult because I'll have to use my 40 power mock punch instead of my 60 power uh, flame, flame wheel. wheel. Yeah. This we'll fight's see. pretty we'll nice. See. We'll see. Uh, Kid Haber here is just so much better for these Zubats. They're all so annoying with Monferno because you can't really one-shot them, and they all have Super Sonic. But now that we have uh, the Kid Haber, it's just so much easier to have to deal with confusion. And we would technically save on one super effective text because we only super effective one of the Mons instead of two. True. Yeah. Something else to think about, I guess. All the bugs are weak to fire. Yeah, th this right here is one of the differences. There are a couple different experience routes through this part of the game. Um, this one is one that I uh, I think basically adapted from the way Ringo does it. Uh, Ringo is one of the Japanese runners. And basically one of the main benefits of this is you hit level 22 um, on the next rival fight, um, which the next rival fight is a thing. So if you, don't, if you have not seen it, uh, stay tuned. Oh, but basically, yeah. um, just by being a level little 22, inside. Yeah, by being level 22, you guarantee a range um, for a pretty unfortunate scenario if you miss the range. So I'm speed um, tied with Skunk Tank. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, the, the good thing is so the Skunk Tank here has Aftermath, um, which is an ability that will make you take a quarter of your own health if you KO it with a contact move. Um, but Monferno dying here is actually okay. So even yeah, if it right, looks like right. we, it's like, oh no, like we just die, like that's fine. Yeah, most of the Monferno problem with the experience was just getting it to become a Monferno. After yeah. that, it's not too crucial. Yeah, in fact, a lot of what a lot of the weird things we do with KOing Monferno and not reviving right away is to make sure it actually doesn't evolve into Infernape. True, because yeah. If if everything goes well, it'll finish the route at level 35. Yeah, because you then don't have to watch the... Also, evolution. nice dark type on the field, and my Kadabra only has psychic moves, so... Haha! <laughs> can't be using that now, can we? Yeah, you just want to get rid of the Zubat, because again, Supersonic is annoying. So yeah, and by doing okay, it that way, okay. we get full experience on the Kadabra, which is very nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was a great start to dodge poison Ooh. gas because it gave me an extra turn of not getting hit. I forgot. Or no, no, no. I, never mind. Time. I'm an idiot. Yeah, the Petra, Ooh, this... right? This is actually very dangerous. Ooh. Because I got crit on top of everything. Uh. You'll be uh... fine. 
I'll be fine. One's Itai. Do I go for it here? Does Mock Punch? Oh, Mach it's a speed tie. I forgot. Yeah, it's yeah, a it's speed tie. Nope. Oh, yeah. I died of poison ticks. Aww. Yeah, and Kadabra doesn't have any moves. Unfortunate. Yeah, that's super unfortunate. Yeah, yeah if, I were, was if I were one there. speed higher, I would have gone for Flame Wheel, and that would have KO'd. Mm -hmm. um, if I wouldn't have gotten critical hits on the fight, I would have had enough HP to live and then just mock Punch to tap it in. So a lot of things actually went wrong. Pretty much since the beginning of the game, like, having the bad speed was the start of that. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think you dodged Poison, guys. I think you just had the Petro equipped. Yeah. And that's yeah, that's correct. This uh, poison gas is 100 percent accurate when poison types use it. I thought I've dodged it before. I'm pretty sure all poisoning, like toxic poison gas, those kind of moves. I think poison types have 100 percent accuracy with them. I, I might be with toxic. I don't know about other ones. Yeah, I know for sure with toxic. Maybe it is dodgeable. And I'm wrong. <laughs> I've been wrong many times. All right, we are going to try again. The other thing that would have helped was to heal before the battle, because remember, I'm I'm like six HP below full health. Yeah, true. So so like everything, literally like the sequence of events that led up to that was pretty pitiful. Snarl is the best case scenario. Nice snap. Yeah, that's great. Oh my god, I'm just freaking out now. <laughs> snapback, let's go. <laughs> Super snapback. It's, it's gonna look real funny when I'm... When, I'm, when we're going back and forth because we're speed tied. I definitely... Yeah. I have not done... Oh gosh, that's so close. I'm... Okay, I'm safe to flame wheel here even if I get hit first. Unless, like, flamethrower crits me or something. I don't think you die to the flamethrower crit. It's close. This is okay. like 15. Okay, it won the speed tie anyway, so that's GG. Perfect. And gets the monkey experience, which isn't too important, but... Helps on one fight if you literally have minimum special defense, as I found out once. Hmm, interesting. Because you're a low... Well, it was the it was the grunt double, and I think I just messaged Jack, I'm like, I'm 27 special defense for this, and you were like, that's not possible. <laughs> it's like oh I, I it's like I died to the skunk tank so I'm actually a level less with zero minus special defense. <laughs> it was like Venishock was killing me from like 28 HP, which was insane. <laughs> I deleted that save file pretty fast. I didn't even want have anything to do with it anymore. Yeah, what's nice about finally getting to this point in the game is you get the bike, which is one of the weirder parts about this game. The bike movement's very scuffed is probably the word to describe it. <laughs> the word for sure, yeah. But yeah, the faster movement's nice, but it's very awkward to use. The windup is so slow. Yeah. Oh yeah, first and, have to get through this full cutscene. And it's the high or the low gear. Even the low gear is has a quite severe wind-up, yeah. in my opinion. So this is where we would catch Scyther. Y'all remember the Scyther route? I do. It's a pretty good route, actually. Great ult main. Uh, Scyther route can be decently competitive uh, if you run it, but it is a brilliant diamond exclusive mod. If you're playing Shining Pearl, you're going to have Pinsir, and Pinsir doesn't have Technician like Scyther does. Or Wing Attack, or Thief. That's that's all you need. Yeah, I Technician, think... Stab, Wing Attack, kind of go burr. I think you, like, only use Wing Attack for, like, the whole run. Yeah, we only we would only use Thief on the Bronzors. Yeah. Because it was the, the best way to handle that. Yeah, people tried to make Pinsir work, and Pinsir was not very good. Mm -hmm. Movement pretty simple through Cycling Road. I didn't get my gear changed. There, there's a high and low gear, as there is in the original Gen 4 games. 
So if you hear the that's that's me just shifting into the low gear before I get to cutscenes like this. So I can have like a marginally faster wind up, but it is very minimal. Like you could just stay in the high gear and not lose all that much time. Yeah. Uh, this route has some very funky movement. I'm gonna have to do it twice through the run. Mm hmm. Also, probably picking up a couple hidden items in these next couple segments. This is, yeah, the revives. There's a couple hidden revives that are Ooh. really clutch. All right. Good. Good to know that about Trainer Vision. <laughs> Is that it's like not Ooh. the full, it's not the full width of the, full width of the map. Yeah. Uh, we 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 learned that was that was all for learning. Um, yeah. I'm going to. Uh, interesting enough, I have to use my Pekka Berry. Nope. Yeah, and then we're healing items. Uh, not to make T Pad nervous, but uh, as you mentioned a couple times, we can't over level the Kadabra, and there's a bunch of spinners in this segment, and. If you hit any of them, then Kadabra becomes overleveled, uh, which is bad. So uh, me saying that was not just to make T-Pat nervous uh, and you know, make this more fun if I keep talking the, about it, you know. But I, I had one run where I was like, well, I can't reset. I don't have enough time, so I'm just going to YOLO. Uh, it is a 50% <laughs> chance maximum, and then the more over level you are, the less of a chance it is. So I was like, oh, it'd be like a 49% chance. The only spinner I get to YOLO in the whole game is this one. Because for some reason, uh, when trainers are loaded onto the screen, that was a bad run to walk, uh, they are frozen in place for two seconds, giving me enough time to pass them before that guy can move. Yeah, I knew that was a bad run to walk. I actually ran a little on the right side. That's yeah. the other weird thing about... Oh, I'm getting punished here. Come on. Yeah. That's the weird thing about spinners is that... Um, the direction, like if you are at an angle to them, they will always favor left or right to spin if that was your running direction. And I was like a half a tile to the right. So his next spin choice was to stay to the right, but it looked like he kept choosing to spin right on a 50-50 chance for a while. Uh, also, this theme is a banger because Etiquette wants to listen to this theme, we're gonna do this. We're gonna get on the bike yeah. here, and then listen to the theme. <laughs> the best theme in the game. There you go. Pick that up from your GDQ run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bike music strats. Uh, See, also, when... banger theme. Oh, yeah, true. See, aren't you guys, like, loving that we actually get to play the game with music? It's funny how, like, one of the things I always ask for in, like, new Pokemon games, what I would be, like, the most excited for, is just no bike theme. Just do not yeah. put the bike yeah. theme in the game. Uh -huh. And then Pokemon listened, and they're like, oh, you don't want the bike theme? How about none of it? <laughs> it makes us run with no music at all. All right, so this is a fight. Etiquette, the floor is yours. So I right. don't vomit as I try to explain this fight. Okay, so <sighs> this fight, <laughs> this is a fight. It's one of so, the fights of all time. It is one of the fights of all time. Okay, so Barry has four Pokemon here. Starly goes down to a confusion. It's not an issue. Um, the Prin Club that comes out is a three hit. And obviously, um, Cadaver is the best thing we have for it. Like, Monferno's not doing anything against the Prinplup, so whatever. Um, we need to use Confusion three times in order to KO. Problem is, if we use Confusion twice, we'll knock the Prinplup down into Torrent. Torrent is basically the water version of Blaze, which means that we would potentially die if we got hit by two Bubble Beams. In this um, case, getting I Stealth am, Rock. Yeah, I getting Stealth Rock wanted, is perfect. Yeah, because I wanted the Torrent hit to put me down into fairly low HP. Exactly. So, um, basically, if you get hit by Bubble Beam turn one, uh, the strategy is to use Psycho Cut. Psycho Cut is a physical move, so Cadaver doesn't have much attack. Um, it does a little bit. You're still pretty likely to knock it into Torrent, um, but it's the best chance you have. Um, then we get rid of the Rosalia. Rosalia is technically a 15 and 16 range, but we got the critical hit, so that's fine. Um, and, and then... And now... And then Ponyta is Don't a crit. two shot. With Don't crit. Don't crit. Okay, yep. good. So what we want to do is use confusion to knock the Ponyta oh, down in health. 
Oh no, we died. Oh no, we died. Darn. I, I hate this. Um, just kidding. We actually don't want to get this experience. Um, so by KOing the Kadabra there instead of switching out, we lose all of the experience for the Ponyta. And then we're also fainted, meaning we don't have to deposit in order to skip double battles coming up. Uh, because when you walk in front of a double battle, if you have more than one Pokemon in your party, they'll trigger the battle for you. Um, but if you only have one Pokemon in your party, it will not trigger the battle. So we can skip, I think there's three double battles? Four, kind of, uh, that we can just sort of blow right past um, during this section because we only have one Pokemon alive. Yeah, full disclosure, full oh. disclosure, by the way, I fell for that bit. I started panicking. <laughs> <laughs> Additionally, if the Ponyta can't uh, get you with Flame Charge, it loves to use Growl and Agility. Yeah, and I mean, loves to use Growl and Agility and never KO you. So usually I like to uh, try to use a Pekka Berry and it's like, oh no, you, you wasted your turn. I'm out of Pekka Berries. I would have actually had to throw Pokeballs, which is even slower. Uh, you could have Heal Powdered, but yeah. That would have worked. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a fight. And like I said, it sets us up really nicely for this whole section. Uh, we just passed the double battle. There's another double battle here in the tower that we can get past. Um, there is a double battle the two kids that are running around outside is a double battle. And then there's a double battle on the like where the tall grass is on the next route. So um, there is quite a bit of optimization here. And then we're actually just going to use Monferno for Heck the you, next Kirby. fight as well. Heck you, Kirby. Spin. OK, <laughs> good. By the way, that is Roughneck Kirby, uh, and he has a Cluffa. All yep. the cute Pokemon. <laughs> it's just a good chance to say, heck you, Kirby. So I'm just coming in to say just that like I'm gonna be switching out and gonna be have Rangers uh, Rangers in for hosting and everything else. Nerdy. But I do really appreciate everybody and like we'll be back tomorrow. So and I'll be back tomorrow, but we're just switching out hosts for a little bit. So alright. Thank Paige. you very much, Paige, for Thanks, hosting. Paige. Thanks, Paige. Paige. Take care. Alright. Uh, I got the HM strength. It's also really neat that since TMs are back to single use in this game, you do get multiple of them as kind of like the, I don't know, like the compensation. But like, that's weird because since there are no HMs, they give you TM strength and TM rock smash. Yeah. And you only have now so many uses and usages of it. I'm not sure if it's used anymore, uh, but it's also nice that they give you a bunch of them and they're not like multi-use because you can sell them. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, and you can get a lot of money for the TMs that you pick up, which is super good for money routing. Okay, okay, okay. That's actually like the perfect amount of HP. Also, shout out to this guy who has the Bronzong team, and he just chills on a route that's raining to always have an advantage. It's just, like, kind of unfair. His one weakness Pokemon. Please don't use Takedown this time. This Chilean is sturdy, and... Ooh, okay, that's actually a really good dodge. Yeah, Because so... otherwise, I would have been at pretty low HP, and remember, I don't have regular potions. Mm -hmm. um, I want to be at approximately half HP because that sets us up for the wake fight really well. If you're at full HP, wake fight becomes a lot harder, a lot more dangerous, weirdly enough. Yeah, you, you want to not be at full health, but obviously you don't want to be like dead uh, because there is one more fight where Monferno is going to be the main attacker. Um, so we just really want to make sure that we are equipped for that fight. Grabbing some TMs there. Um, that's my least favorite spinner in the whole game. Ooh, okay. Ooh, okay. <laughs> that that, little, and that's that that's dog. why. <laughs> that's the exact reason why. Oh my yeah. gosh. The, I just, left the alternating turns there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he, he did not make it easy on me. Nice time change. It is now nighttime in my game. Going slightly out of the way here. This is uh, part of the reason why this route's even possible, I would say. <laughs> Uh, this shockwave TM just being um, right here is uh, kind of just fair. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna teach it immediately. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, you only get one, but uh, 
That's all we need here. Whoa, 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 one is enough. Abra. He's a couple grass knots here. Yeah, and this the shockwave TM is um, in the perfect location as well because the not the next fight we're doing, but the fight after is one of the meanest fights that uh, they could have ever put into a Pokemon game. Yeah. So remember, this route's raining. Um, yep. So that's it, it's always raining. It's not like it's a time-based thing. So you just have to deal with rain on this route. And there's a Waterfall Gyarados. It's like, who thought that this was okay? <laughs> who thought this was fair? Well, it's really Gen 4's fault, because this game True. is a Diamond Pearl remake, like one for one remake. All yeah, but the Pokemon the are like are identical. Different. Yeah. Like the, the, the Pokemon are the same, but the, the movesets and stuff. Yeah, I don't think it has Waterfall yeah. in, in Gen 4. Probably had level up set, which would have been like Splash and Bite. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. This is like, please stop. This Glammy has a 1 in 16 all. range, but getting Fake Out plus Fury Splice is really dangerous. Yeah, and then also, is this a speed tie with the Kadabra? I forget. It's no, I, I'm out. Okay, it's just an Now, can you side beam? Please don't crit me. Okay. Yeah, luckily we have moves that are... Uh, I have super potions already. Oh, Gosh. Yeah, one of the really nice things about Shockwave is Shockwave is a move that does not miss. It's like it's like Swift. So mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have accuracy at all. It just does not miss. So these Kadabras, there's a couple that we fight in the run, um, and they have Kinesis. Kinesis. But Kinesis doesn't affect us if we're just using Shockwave. I've literally never been this low on healing items. It's it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it kind of stemmed back to the triple flinch. Yeah, kind of started there and yeah. snowballed. All right, time for the Garrett ice trainer. Now, luckily, the experience works out just <laughs> chef's kiss on this fight. Yeah, this oh, is just, yeah, true. this looks like the actual dangerous fight with a Monferno and then the waterfall Gyarados in the rain. Yeah, this is and the second experience threshold that is very nice to hit. 25, which guarantee is the Gyarados range with Shockwave. Because even though Shockwave is a pretty cool move, it is a special attack, and Gyarados has good special defense. So even four times effective, and it's only 50 base power, doesn't do as much as you'd think to a Gyarados, but luckily a low roll would kill. Yeah, yeah. it does. Uh, the... Min roll is exactly Gyarados's HP. Whew. And finally, we get to the Big Mart. Uh, and Big Mart here sells so much. Um, oh my god, yeah. Oh, it's so busted. I noticed it immediately. Yeah. Uh, nice input here. So obviously X items uh, crucial for the run. They sell all the repel types. You get like super and max repels here. Um, first off, all these items we picked up that zinc, just money, all these TMs. Uh, this is so much money for all these TMs. Uh, even out of the way for a couple just to sell them for like a couple thousand. And speaking of TMs, this shop also sells some incredible TMs. Um, actually busted. Yeah, I like, noticed it in my casual playthrough. I'm like, oh, this is in the route for sure. Yeah, I saw Flamethrower and Thunderbolt and Dazzling Gleam. It's like, and how does Psychic? So many TM Psychics in here. Um, pretty much all the good moves are just buyable from this shop. Um, Sword Stance, I think, is here. Um, mm -hmm. There's just, there, there's so many options. Ice Beam, like, you, whatever moveset you need. Um, you can you get got it so long as you've got the money for it because they are decently expensive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the the other thing that we pick up a lot of money items for it are um, those vitamins. So, yep. um, Kadabra, obviously a very strong special attacker. Um, we're going to be using it for the entire run. It does need a little bit of help, so we get some calciums that way we can, um, you know, make sure that we hit a few special attack thresholds um we're actually gonna be using four over the course of the run yeah um, which is another earlier. yeah it's another difference between some of the other like experience routes that you'll see out there yeah if you if you didn't know this uh back on the route right after the rival fight uh t-pat picked up a calcium and used it before the gyarados um to guarantee the range 
as well as helping out later with the uh, boosted special attack. So that'll be something you'll see is just the calcium usage throughout the run. Also, talking about TMs, that guy right there gives you nasty plot, which you know would be incredible, but we have X items, and it's better to just use the X items than use the move. I think it's faster and also doesn't take up a move spot. And time to teach all the moves. Save I'll Dazzling Gleam for here. Yeah, we'll we'll save Dazzling Gleam for later. Mm hmm Because the Kadabra needs to use what, five, six attacking moves throughout the course of the run, so we just kind of have to balance our moveset just a little bit. Yeah. Fairy coverage is mostly for the dark tapes, and there aren't any for a little bit, so you don't really need to care too much about the fairy coverage until then. This is one of the gems of all time. Remember that one-to-one -one map tile-based <laughs> yeah. system? Everything is just made of glue and makes this very, very difficult to navigate um, with a free-formed, you know, non-grid. <laughs> yeah, but so far so good. I've been getting, I've been getting a lot more confident and just smooth. Mm -hmm. You'll know if I'm doing the gym good is on the rotator in the bottom center. If I'm if I don't have to wait for him, then I'm doing the gym good. If I do, then it's like eh, it's a little. You, you'll see what I mean in a moment. It's just so clutch to get psychic for this gym. You get like just in time to really use it. Without psychic, this would be such a pain. Yeah, yeah, pretty on. clean there. Okay, this is actually good. Bam. Ooh, okay. You do this so if I so have to... I do? Yeah, if I have to <laughs> wait for that guy's cycle, then I've known I've gone a little slow. But otherwise, I get it about where I got it there. Now, the cool thing is, is that there are two spinners, so I am going to save. Yeah, if you Unless hit Unless I spinner. want to do the whole gym over again. So I'm actually mm -hmm. going to bait him into looking down so I can just speed up him looking back for a safe pass here. What you're gonna yeah. see me do is gonna run into him and then walk by him. When, when he decides to move, that is. Yeah, and the second spinner here, it's really important. Like, there's a really cool way you can do it. Um, we'll see how it goes when we get there. Oh, I'm doing it the, the way you're talking about. Okay, I'll explain it after, that way. Uh, uh nice. Oh, God, okay. Yeah, again, the issue isn't, like, these fights being hard. Like, they wouldn't be too difficult to win. The issue is you would not have enough... Ex or you would go over on experience, and mm -hmm. that would cause issues later, so... Yeah, yeah so with that last oh, spinner... Um, turn fra the turn frames are pretty harsh on the D-pad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that last spinner can spin any of the four directions. Um, and so what T-Pad did was when they turned to the right, he ran underneath them and then walked to the left, and basically that's a completely safe pass because we know that the spinner's next turn is going to be down. And so um, you can sort of like run up one tile, then walk to the left and up, and you can go all the way around the spinner that way um, as long as they don't spin. Like they can't spin down and then left or up fast enough to actually hit you. Um, t had a little bit of an issue with the, the turn frame, so like he didn't want to do the full turn or like the full pass, but uh, I, that worked I really basically. Nicely. I basically double tap right to kill the turn frame and then walk into it. So that way I get a consistent movement because I often just walk right past him like on the top and I'm not able to like run up towards Maylene and it's really frustrating. So I just I do a lot of tapping on the D pad to make sure I'm getting one tile movements per D pad really sucks in this game. Maylene gave me a very awkward pattern. It is the optimal pattern where I don't have to X speed and I let the Lucario hit me. Yeah, I'm a uh, I'm a casual player. What are these um, times items that you're using? You use time oh, cross item? special <laughs> attack. Yeah, cross special attack. I've never seen them before. <laughs> well, you um, see, my dear, my dearest shenanigans. <laughs> In the olden days, using one of them would increase your stats temporarily in the fight by 
Since Gen 7, it is now 100% increased. But only for that battle and only while the Pokemon is on the field. Gotcha. Okay. So it's basically like using a sword stance or a nasty exactly. plot. Uh, okay. Makes sense. And um, one of the, the really busted things is, so this is a remake of Generation 4 games. In Generation 4, those cross items um, were only one stage and they cost about like 500 Poke Dollars, a little bit less for some of them. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends on which one you do. In Generation 7, when they made them plus two stages, uh, they instead, you know, increased the price. So that way you can't just like, you know, load up on a bunch of them for cheap. So they end up being almost double the price. Um, actually, in some cases, even more than double. Uh, X Defense, for example, are like 2,000 Poke Dollars. Yeah. Um, this game and Let's Go are both remakes, uh, but, you know, from Generation 7 onward. And so they kept the prices from the originals, but the actual effect from Generation 7 and 8. So we actually have plus two X items uh, for like 300, 500 Poke Dollars. It's kind of disgusting. <laughs> and plus you get so much money in this game just from all the TMs and the vitamins yeah. that you can pick up. So you can buy so many of them. Like, I think you buy like almost 30 X special attacks. Yeah. Yeah, I think the I think the brilliant diamond route needs twenty four X special attacks, and I think shiny pearl only needs what twenty one, twenty two, uh, and less X speeds yeah. and less X speeds too. Uh, okay, this is fine. This is fine. So that's why I didn't want to take takedown on that earlier fight because I did get hit for about like fifteen damage, and if I was already at like twenty HP, that would have been pretty dangerous. But you don't want to be at full health because this Clefairy likes to use Life Dew, which will heal you. And we don't want to be at full health, the monkey anyways, uh, for the wake fight. So this is good. I didn't die, and I'm not at full health. This is good. You also may have this deposited the Kadabra. Uh, do not want to get this experience on the mm -hmm. Kadabra, so put that away for this fight. And thankfully, by teaching Flamethrower, the Monferno can almost always get all four KOs. There's only one Pokemon that's like a range. Yeah. Uh, but it's usually not bad because the Clefairy can always hit it with a disarming voice and tap it in. Also yeah. holding the Metronome now. Pick that up before the gym, but didn't explain it. Uh, the Metronome just increases the power of your move the more times in a row that you use it. Um, is it 10% every turn? 20%. 20. Oh, it's 20. Okay, yeah. So after it caps at five so uh basically the the first five times you use the move it'll get like stronger and stronger and then it caps it basically double power yeah there's there's a there's a fight that we do later on that is actually better to build up a metronome stack with a move like um uh, like psychic it's better to do that than it is to like use a super effective move on a pokemon just because like the the built up metronome stack on psychic does more damage also, you may have noticed it there how fast the swap between the Pokemon is. So, uh, a lot of the time you'll see that kind of setup where you just go in your party menu, put the metronome on the, the first Pokemon, and then do the fight. Uh, that'll be happening a lot in this run. It's really cool to see kind of the item management because it makes all the fights kind of interesting. It's like, okay, what's our best item for this fight? We have the wise glasses, we have the metronome, we have the choice specs. It's like, what do we want for this fight? And you can kind of just pick. This is the first time uh, that I've actually used the Calcium in that menu. Usually I just wait until before Wake. But it does increase the Kadabra range from 4 and 16 to 6 and 16. And I want to save healing items as much as possible now. Had to heal anyway, so it's not too big a deal to just go over to the Calcium and use it. Yeah, it's always been 20% for a while. I remember it being 20 in uh, Oras. Okay, he didn't hit me, which is great. Yeah, the no, range. we're still not we're still not safe because there's a couple Pokemon in Wake's gym that have Quick Attack and Aqua Jet, so I might still have to heal, but mm -hmm. it gives me a chance to save an item. I love this movement, by the way. This is the best movement in the game, by far, unless I mess it up. Oh, <laughs> My thumb like actually just like slipped off the. Ooh. Off the path for a, wind, a little bit. <laughs> and I told you, my thumb like slipped off for a second. Holy moly. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Grab a couple I only lost like a couple steps. 
Yeah, that Mac either comes in clutch, and there's also a calcium on the beach, I believe. So that'll be yep. the third calcium that gets picked up. Yep. And I will never pick it up on the bike because I've missed and talked to that trainer. Where is it? And it's very dumb. <laughs> How All did right. you not grab? All right, there we go. Okay, game. Thank you. That D pad moment. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. okay. Oh, that, that oh, was man, really man. unfortunate. I tried to, so what I tried to do was run to her left to keep her looking to the left, and then D pad walk on the other side, and I failed to get a up input, and instead took left inputs. So this is why the D pad sucks in the pro con. If you are holding up but have absolutely any pressure, like 1% pressure left or right, you will go left or right. It literally does not matter. Also, for those of you freaking out like I do, whenever I see somebody do a reset in this game, there's an auto save feature, so. Uh, so I'm gonna <laughs> you know, you have it, to panic all the time. I'm gonna do it the safe way this time by just literally being patient and waiting. It's, I, it's also I worth had mentioning. It, ugh, but it was stupid. Yeah, it's also worth mentioning, um, that's a pro controller issue. That's not just a D-pad issue. Like, I use a third-party controller for this game, and I don't have that same sort of, like, left-right priority uh, that happens with the pro controller. When I use my Procon, it does. Um, but when I use the other one, it doesn't for some reason, so... Yeah, it is. It is just a it, pro controller issue. It is something... That's why, that's why I was burning, um, what the turn frames in the previous gym and it really burned me bad uh, right there. So we're going to probably do not as many run to walk passes as I want because that was the one I tried and I'm a hope for one on it now. <laughs> yeah, it's also unfortunate like hitting spinners later in the run like it, it's still time loss but it's not like run over scenario because again uh right now we need to stay low on experience and like that that fate wouldn't be an issue later on you would just use psychic or whatever fates over but uh because of the experience routing like you just can't deal with that trainer so hitting spinners early is a huge problem but later on it's just like however long the fate takes of time loss yeah praise be to the auto save feature yeah uh, came in handy in this run. Now, if I don't die to wake, that will completely negate <laughs> the, the time loss from uh, from that exact uh, mistake. Now, none of the trainers in the gym are any problem. The only thing that can happen is if I get Aqua Jets or Quick Attack, and I have to heal it. And it's just one more healing item I've used. So do we want to get a head start on the wake fight? Because it is the most important fight of the whole game. Um, sure. So yeah, like T-Pat said, um, wake is going to be the most important fight of the entire run. Um, it is what the entire route, at least up to this point, has been built around. So the fight before wake, uh, we're going to exactly hit level 30. It's not exact. It's like like I said earlier, it's like within seven, a range 70 XP or something. It's yeah, it's about seven experience over level 30. Um, it's within a range of about 79 experience. Um, before the fight, we are going to use the remaining calcium we have. So we're going to have pumped three total calciums into our cadaver. This will make the Gyarados, the, the lead Gyarados on wake a 15 and 16 range with Shockwave. Um, Hooray. Yeah, it's a four times super effective move. It's still a range, I know. So once we get past the Gyarados, we are going to switch to Monferno because I didn't mention it, but also before the fight, we're going to change our battle style from set to switch. And that's going to basically every time we KO a Pokemon, uh, the game is going to ask us, do we want to change our Pokemon? Um, you know, it's that kind of feature. So casual gamer moments. Exactly. Casual gamer moment. We're going to turn that on for this fight and switch to Monferno after we KO the Gyarados. We switch to Monferno because the Quagsire that comes out second has four moves. Uh, two of them are really bad. Kind of three there of them are, are bad. <laughs> um, <laughs> They're yeah, all three of them. Kind of well, three are bad. One is okay. Yeah. 
Um, and we basically want to make not the Quagsire. See. Yeah, we basically want to make the Quagsire not able to use two of those three bad moves. Um, the the two bad moves that we want to avoid are um, Rain Dance, which obviously sets up Rain. And the reason we don't want to see that is because the Float Soul that comes out at the end has Swift Swim, making it faster in the rain. Um, and it also has Haze, which removes stat changes. So if we use like an X item and it uses Haze, then our stat change goes away. So we're going to use Taunt, the move that we've kept all the way from level 9 on our Chimchar, um, to prevent that. And we want to be KO'd in return because we want the, the Cadaver to be out while, while the Quagsire is still taunted. Um, There's level so 30. That's why the Monferno has to not be at full health. Once the Monferno goes down, Cadaver comes in, we're going to use an X speed, and we're going to hopefully see Mudshot. Mudshot's going to lower our speed, but only by one stage. X speed raised it by two, meaning we'd still KO the... or we'd still be faster than the Floatzel. If we get Scalded, that's bad, and we have to heal, because if we take too much damage, then the Floatzel is going to go for Aqua Jet, which means our X speed doesn't matter anymore. So... We need to basically get hit by a mud shot or have mud shot miss and be at 50 health or higher. Um, if we're at 49 or lower, the Floatzel will use Aqua Jet. Getting hit from full down to 49 health is a max. One in from 16. The side. Yeah, one and in 16. I can't max tell roll. you how many times I get outright max rolled. Not crits, like one in 16 high rolled. So, knowing all that, let's see how this goes, because this is one of those fights that's like, if it derails, it's just unrecoverable. There's, yeah. like, if I get if I get scalded, I have to, like, go for, like, a 1, a one in 20 just miss or something like that, you know? Yeah, and the other thing that's um, kind of tricky, or not tricky, it's just involved in the routing as well, is we're going to be using Grass Knot to KO the... Um, Quagsire and the Floatzel. Grass Knot doesn't KO the Floatzel unless we have that metronome boost. So, like, that's just another element to this fight. Okay, this is got, also got why the you 15 and the... 16. Good start, good start. Yeah, this is also why you want the monkey to be low HP, because otherwise the Quagsire won't kill it. Yeah, Mudshot might not kill Monferno. Scald usually does, but Mudshot could also miss. Yeah, true. It is 95% accurate. All right, so far so good. So taunt up. I'm gonna get my X speed up. We're gonna hope for mud shot and don't high roll. Oh, that's actually a low roll. It did the outright low roll, which is hilarious. I've never seen that before. There it is. It is a, it is a very weird quirk that Aqua Jet could kill us from here, but it just never goes for it unless the low roll always kills. I don't know how we would do this fight if that wasn't the case. Wait, just... so it doesn't go for Aqua Jet even though one of the rolls kills? Yep. Perhaps. In fact, most of the rolls will kill. Um, it's just It'll... the absolute, like, not all of them will, so it just doesn't go for it. Oh, yeah, because it judges that the other move always kills. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so because it sees that you always kill with that I think makes like Aqua sense. Tail or Waterfall, it just always goes for that because it's like, I'm 100% to kill with this move. Instead of 94 with the other moves. Jet. Yeah. Not smart oh, enough to realize thank... that we're going to Oko them with Grass Knot. In that thank turn. God. Because <laughs> th this this run would be miserable yeah. if that wasn't the case. It would literally just be pray, to, pray Aqua Jet doesn't kill. You'd probably just X defend twice or something and have to set up and like deal with rain and just wait out the rain turns. Yeah, probably. It'd just be slow. And that's <laughs> very, the thing, with the, with the rain, the Aqua Jet then always kills because of the mm -hmm. boost. All right, time for a fun oh, berry funny. fight. Uh, th this is where the uh, the held items begin, right? On the berry yes. fights? <laughs> okay, so uh, this, this is the first of many fights where uh not like the original games but uh, they've added kind of competitive held items and like move sets and whatnot to several pokemon in this run uh so barry's got some held items here including a quick claw on the starly um 20 to activate but it won't because we're speed running here and shush we've manipulated Cease. from the start of the game that uh it will not be activating on this fight 
Let's see what happens here. Right. So I guess for double team, which is annoying. I have never seen double team. I would Thank try and run goodness. two. <laughs> yeah, double team is actually really sick there because we have Shockwave and can just take it out. But uh, yeah, Quick Claw double team is going to be something that can happen on these fights. It's so frustrating. It's 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 more frustrating on Barry 4 than it is Barry 3. Yeah. Uh, the worst is if he just goes for Pluck and then gets the Quick Claw to activate and then he crits Pluck, which Please has die. happened to me and I have just, you just died. Mm -hmm. I've died to this fight and I'm just like, huh? Yeah, I forget all the held items that Barry equips, but the only one that really matters is the Quick Claw and then later on the Focus Sash on the Staraptor. So you just have to deal with these like really annoying items on these fights. Yeah, Barry's one of the rivals of all time. Yeah, honestly. Where where would you rank Barry in terms of Pokemon rivals? God, I hate Barry. Are we talking about quality of like the individual? Or are we talking about like how good their team is? You know, you know what? A little column A, a little column B. I'd Barry. say like here. I think Barry is worse than Hop. That's that's tough. I think so. Wait, which one's Hop? Is that How too? Yeah, Hop is uh, Sword and Shield. Okay, I got okay, the yeah, correct yeah. run to walk that time. I redeemed myself. Yeah, I don't know who the best rival is. Probably Silver. Yeah, the first Silver, ha Silver has, really has good rivals. character development, at least. Mm-hmm. Also, that, that Barry fight's in the weirdest spot in terms of, like, the story of the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, you're and... chasing this guy who's just like, haha, I just planted a bomb on one of the lakes. I'm going to run away from you now. And then Barry, like, grabs you from behind and is like, fight me first. And it's like, yeah, he also excuse? He also has a Pokemon that's almost double its evolution level. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he has a 20 oh. level 26 Starly. It evolves at 14. Yeah, that fight in Platinum, he's got Star after. Granted, you're a gym, le uh, gym it, leader yeah. ahead, but still. Uh, I saw in the chat, someone was like, oh no, you didn't grab Defog. Whatever will you do? Uh, quite no simple. We, we, we will just uh, ignore that Fog exists. What will I do? I will just see. I will just see. Have you considered just not being bad? <laughs> yeah, the, the nice thing about this game, so in the originals, fog is uh, um, not just a thing out of battle, it's also a thing in battle. Um, if you are, you know, in a battle in fog, all moves are 60% accurate, I think. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, like, it's like a minus one stage or something. Yeah, and in this game, it gives you misty terrain, which is like... Oh no, I can't uh, get status or something. Like, yeah, it's uh -huh, very funny. Really not <laughs> it's like optimal. <laughs> it's it's like better than not having fog or whatever. Yeah. But it's the opposite in the overworld where yeah. in the original games you would miss moves in battle. Well, and it was easy to see through fog. It is literally the opposite here. The fog is very deep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so most players will just adjust their monitors um, to give themselves any kind of advantage to be able to see through the fog. The way I handle it is I've adjusted my contrast and sharpness. My sharpness is like all the way high. So the, uh, the galactic mirror floors look really grainy to me, but it's all to have a better ability to see in the fog. Some players will set their switches uh, color to inverse and just play the game with completely inverted colors the whole game. I personally don't think that helps, but you know, to each their own. Yeah, it does I was really work. hoping you would say something like, I've just adjusted my talent level and you just left it and <laughs> just like, yeah, I just, <laughs> I just, adjust, I just, I just ad adjusted my skill issue. Yeah, just, you know, I got better and now it's no issue at all. Yeah, you have to do a lot on this uh, route with the uh, Kadabra route, you used to just kind of go. Now you have to pick up Shadow thank, Ball, which is out of the way. Thank God that we uh, only have one Pokemon alive because this double fight up the stairs here is mean if you have oh, two Pokemon yeah. alive. Yeah, okay. Night. 
It's like Gyarados ah, Raichu or something. Ooh, I try to run to walk and I hit this guy. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh yeah, you ran a little too far. That's a bummer. I didn't think I did. Oh, some bonus XP. <sighs> I forget how scary this fight is. I think this one's a little scary, but I can't remember. I have no, I, I have no idea uh, what he it has. Is, it's Mothim, Onyx without Sturdy, and Luxray? Not okay, Luxray, yeah. uh, the second stage, Luxio. That, yeah, the Luxio is a little scary, I remember, but that's not important on this can round. I, can I grass not the Luxio? Probably not. I would say no. I'm going to use the Psy Shock then, because I have one extra Psy Shock. I will say you can grass not the Onyx. <laughs> I was thinking of Shockwave. Okay, whatever game. How bad? I click Psy Shock and now I have to center heal. <laughs> oh, All okay. Right. I was scared. For a second, I was like, oh god, Kadabra has no defense. And then I remembered, oh yeah, Onyx has no attack. There's no attack. <laughs> Alright, I'm scary. I'm a, I, I'm actually a little upset with myself because it happens. I, I made a mistake and then I made another mistake, which is going to cost me even more time because now I don't have enough uh, I don't have enough PP to get through the next rival fight. I will uh, say at least I'm a didn't Psy Shock snowball. short. Like that—that's the kind of stuff that snowballs sometimes, or it's like ah, I'm short of PP now, and then you like try and save it later. It can just be nice these marathon runs. Just use the center and not have to think about it anymore. Even though it's obviously a little bit slower. Yeah, that's a that's a bummer that uh, I thought I did a safe pass, did not, and then made a mistake in battle. It's also hard because you have to like stop on a pretty specific tile when you're doing those spinner passes. That it one in be... particular, I have to run up the stairs on the right tile because the vision goes to the left tile, but mm. not all the way across. It also sucks there's not one but two annoying spinners on this route. Yeah, that's not even the hard one. <laughs> the The hardest spinner is coming up because there are three tiles up on the screen or like farther away from the camera, making it more difficult to see them. Yeah. Actually, that was a perfect uh, spot to get an ad on the stream. You all didn't miss anything. <laughs> You all are lucky that your eyes were in fact averted to exactly zero mistakes that occurred between when the when the ads ran. The viewers all missed one minute of gameplay. T Pat missed one Psy Shock PP. Two actually. True. Yeah. Okay. You can look down. All right, at least I got that. Yeah, I'm not updating my monitor setting, so I can't see anything. <laughs> it's just impossible. It, it's it was really funny when I was on the uh, when I was on the flight to GDQ and I was trying to practice on the plane, and you're just playing in handheld mode, and then you realize that the the fog setting or like the display settings are not built for the fog. Right, yeah. Literally <laughs> it was impossible. like it was like holding my switch like an inch to my face and I'm sure that everybody in my row was just like what's your problem? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I um I had to check like before the run, before my run at GDQ, I literally was like I need to load up the fog route and see if I can even see right now because it was the first time I played on that TV. <laughs> it wasn't bad, was it? It was not that bad. Yeah, it's definitely like, weird using Pokemon, that, like, not the settings you're used to for Pokemon games. There's a lot of times where that can matter a lot. Hey, we got some bonus XP on the uh, Kadabra. Might help with, like, one range in, like, an hour or something. <laughs> Except scaled experience will, will hold us back, so if it's going to make a difference, it's going to make a difference now. I guess that's fair, yeah. Uh, the one fight where I could see it making a difference, but I think it's too far away, is the next Mars fight. Because that fight does have a 15 and 16 and 14 and 16 range. True, yeah, if you get the extra level somehow. 
Uh, but we <laughs> we candy before it, so I think it's a moot point. Oh yeah, you candy right after the Cyrus fade anyway. <laughs> we candy to make it those ranges and outspeed. <laughs> Tell you what, if you hit a second optional, maybe you get an extra level after the candies. <laughs> well, we get to save a healing item because I'm going to center instead of healing. True. So we got that going for us. Um, so I wear glasses, but I, I mean, I, lo I love having glasses. So let's pick up some more glasses. How about wise glasses? Cool. Yeah. I want, so this I want the choice specs. Oh, you want the choice specs? Okay, let's make it happen. Yeah, so based off the time of day, this guy will give you different items, and uh, guess what we can do without <laughs> getting all the items? Hey, look, it's daytime now. Hey, look at Wayne. that. I would like some more glasses, sir. Should also mention, play the evening for the majority of the run, because Machop is more common, I think is the reasoning. Yeah, so it's... Machop is and... more common in the day, which includes evening. Which includes evening. Um, and then... Buy a potion, buy a potion, buy a potion. Yeah. Buy one potion. Um, yeah, so Machop is more common in the day, which includes evening. Um, the... Wise glasses are available at night. And the choice specs are available in the morning. And so if you have your switch set to 12 hour time, um, you can just change from PM to AM to get both of them. Um, and then for me personally, um, and it might be the same for some other people too, uh, uh, it's easier for me to see on the fog route when it's nighttime. So like everything just sort of works out that way. Oh, your mom Ferno is alive now. Yeah, uh, that's fine. That's it's unavoidable. I have to heal. True. Yeah. Because I have to do it before the berry fight, so it it all just doesn't make a difference. No. Yeah, I was gonna say you could have bought like one regular potion to do the blaze setup, but I don't think it's too important. Nah, it's all good. Now I I could probably even just save the menu from having to revive and heal now. Well, you're so good at math. You're able to do that without even reading the question. Woo! That's that cuz I that's cuz I cheated and I stole the answers from the professor. How yeah, else do you think I got through college? Yeah. Bought the teacher's version of the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a bunch of math questions you're supposed to like open the potet the poketch like figured out the, <laughs> the last one's the best one because it asks you what was the answer to the first room and if you forgot you have to walk all the way back down <laughs> but if you get it wrong you get to see a drift loon which is required in the e4 run two run because otherwise you ca you cannot see a drift loon otherwise unless you wait till it's friday oh yeah true you would only be able to play on fridays for that run <laughs> And you wouldn't be able to start the game on Friday because the date needs to roll over after defeating Mars. Mm -hmm. So in this fight, don't get burned, don't get crits. A lot easier and, said than done. And don't stay status. Yeah, uh, this strength Griffin sap, is Hex. Case if you're wondering why, uh, Hex is double damage if you're status, so it's very important not to be status uh, when it uses Hex. Um, doesn't matter now. I'm just going to attack. Yeah, I already got the pool set up. Also, Synchronize being epic here, losing like 10 seconds because the Drift yeah. burned itself. Yeah, Fantina's okay, unless you're Attica, and then you always get crit by Fly or Hex, and... <laughs> hate this fight. <laughs> just, your run just immediately dies. See, I got rid of all my bad luck by, by bad execution. <laughs> all, all my gym leader fights will go swimmingly now. It was all, it was all to actually manip a good marathon run. Well, we will get to see... Uh... Monferno, uh, not Monferno, uh, Infernape, probably this run, so that'll be exciting. Weirdly enough, if I hit level 30 for 
Um, for Byron, it might make it a much more decent two-shot flamethrower range. Oh, true. Yeah, you're right. You should definitely hit level 30. Yeah, with all the fights in Byron's gym, there's like four. Yeah, there's no way. And you I still have the Barry fight. You might hit like 32. <laughs> uh, and then you can't teleport out of this gym because they forgot to install a teleporter. I'm like in Platinum, so we have to take all the elevators all the way back down. Wasn't Fantino like the final boss and glitched at one point? Yeah. Uh, back in that version of the route, we didn't have the, um, we didn't have a way to like walk out of bounds. This was before we found menu storage. Um, so the only like true glitch that we had was uh, surfing on the barrel to get the E4. Uh-huh. And, so, and you need access to surf. Yeah, we needed access to surf. So the real final boss wasn't Fantina because uh, we could poke it all glitch the fight and not have to do it. But uh, we did need to grunt. fight the grunt that was walking the cave to get access to the surf HM. Uh, yeah, that I was a weird version of the grunt. Powder. And stuff Somebody drop something? Because it wasn't me. It sounded like it. <laughs> I promise it, was, it wasn't me throwing the controller. As much as I want to. <laughs> that would have happened on the fog route. We're past yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely would have. <laughs> Stream's over. The whole marathon's over. <laughs> One bad thing happened. Nice. My hand got out of position. Huge strategy here. Making a little bit closer to the rare candy to grab it. Also, I love the surf music in this game. It's so calm. For, the, for the, this one, I would normally run walk past the spinner, but I'm going to play it extra safe now. Yeah. We're, do, yeah, we're, done, we're, done, with, we're done with spinners now. This person only looks uh, right and up, and so in theory, you can run until you're diagonal to him and then walk above him, and it will work fine, but yeah. But I've already messed up fine. two of those two of those exact passes hey, what already. What are the odds you would mess up a third one? I know. See, now, I, what... You mess it up once, shame on me. Mess it up twice, I have the yips. <laughs> and now I can't do it anymore. All right, time for another very fun fight. This is the, uh... This is very four. I forgot how many rivals we've done. Yeah, this, this is, is very four. four. Yeah, so then, this fight is a quick claw fun. Yeah. This and fight is a prime example of the metronome boost, because yes. we don't have to set up but our True. Psyshock will have increased power throughout the fight. Okay, it... Screw you, Barry. He did get, it did get the Quick Claw boost, so I have to heal that again. Yep. Okay. But well, so the, the other thing Quick that can Claw is going to be guaranteed. Yeah, the other thing that can happen is you get Quick Claw double team miss, and then you have to Shockwave. And by Shockwaving, you only have three shy shocks, uh stacked instead of four by the time you get to the Print Blub, and then the Print Blub is like a 14 and 16 range. Yeah, I, so, have it, I have it written as 13, 16. And um, if you miss it, it's torrent boosted if it uses a water move, and it's just all bad. I think it's 14 and 16 if you use Psychic on this fight. It depends on the PP route you're using. But yeah, at least it wasn't the double team dodge. So now instead of having to deal with that, it's just have to heal, which while annoying isn't, you know, a death. It's a menu you want to do. You have to do anyways. Um, it's just it's more efficient to do it after the next fight because you almost always take damage on the next fight as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and that's a fight that can kill you from full um, like one out of 16 every times. So, yep. Yeah, it's, it has sturdy, right? The Celix? Yeah, it has sure sturdy. Does. And if it chooses to use Iron Tail, it is a 4 in 16 to KO you. And it's yes. a one in four to choose that move. There are also other very weird scenarios that could happen because it does have Ice Fang and Thunder Fang, so it could freeze or paralyze you. 
I will say you're a level higher, so it's probably less than a one in uh, or a four and sixteen to kill you. You might actually be. Uh, oh yeah, actually, that's a good point. You might actually just live <laughs> like hundred percent here. I'm not sure the range is it. Um, uh, Thirty-eight. Want to teach Shadow Ball early? We have to keep Grass Knot for this gym. Yeah, I feel like this gym, a lot of it is, uh, it's a game of, do you have sturdy? <laughs> yeah. do, do, you, do you have sturdy? Yeah, and it's actually kind of funny because, um, so the teams, obviously, like, the move sets are different because the games have different moves now. Um, but the teams are the same as they were in the originals, including the abilities. But sturdy is actually an ability that changed in Generation 5. So it used to be that sturdy would prevent one-hit KO moves, so a move like Horn Drill or Guillotine. Um, now it prevents a one-hit from full. So it actually like makes these fights way harder than they used to be just because you now have to deal with what is essentially a Focus Sash. It's actually such an annoying change for speedrunners, the sturdy change, because there's so many Geo dudes uh, in just Pokemon speedruns in general, and all of them having sturdy now pretty much is such an annoyance. Same with Onyx. I think that's the only spinner in this gym. Everyone else is required. There's just a lot of fights in this gym before Byron. That spinner is kind of funny too, because if you take that the the platform before him, you can get around him. Like you just go platform up, and then you take the next one, and then you're past him, and then you take the one you need. But it's like, what's faster, like waiting for the spinner or doing two extra platform pads? Yeah. The, this Steelix and the next one you see will be a 14 and 16 range. Um, I might just grass not the other one because I want to save my healing items. Yeah, they also, guess what, don't have Sturdy, so you can actually KO yeah. them in one turn. Now, Sturdy is going to be a big issue on Byron himself. Yeah. Because two of his Pokemon have it, and they're both very annoying to have. Luckily, uh, throughout our you know years of advancement in society, we've come up with sturdy countermeasures uh, that will be <laughs> used in this gym. Uh, they're not useful on like the first Helix, uh, but there's a cool strategy that has been developed over the years to deal with the sturdy Pokemon on Byron, specifically because they come out second and third on the fight. Also, it's really weird, like, whenever there's these gyms and it's like, oh, this is the steel gym. It's like, I have two rock ground types. It's just always really weird. It's like, just evolve. Oh, <laughs> just oh, train it and train it back. Just, just wait till the, the, not this fight, but the next fight. You're going to be yeah. way more confused. <laughs> yeah. no, I know. My like... two favorite steel types are fucking Azumarill and <laughs> Skaroopy. Yeah, it's just so confusing, this gym. There's like... Only Steelix on these fights is like the Steel types, and then just random other Pokemon. It gets really fun in Volker's gym, the uh, uh, the, the Electric type gym, but yeah. my favorite Electric types <laughs> such as Kadabra and Mr. Mime. The the way I just the gym like leaders Octillery, Octillery. <laughs> and Ambipom. Yeah. The way I justify that is that it's the it's the steampunk gym. Like like how Ryan and Sword and Shield is the weather gym and not so much the dragon gym. Fair enough. Yeah. Volgner, Volgner is the steampunk gym. This one I cannot justify though. It's like this is all like this is purely like a steel metal working gym. And then and then there's this trainer and her Azumarill apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the Skaroopy doesn't make any sense to me. I, I can kind of understand things like the Octillery in Lochner's gym, because it's like, if you're building a team to counter electric types, then you're probably going to have a ground type, and so Octillery would be good against ground types. So, like, Azumarill is a water type, so it's going to be good against ground types, which are good against or, steel. Or but what fire the types. heck does Skaroopy do? <laughs> yeah. A 
All right, so this fight um, is one of the more dangerous uh, gym leader fights. Oh, you get hype, more monkey. More monkey. Hot. Two levels higher monkey as well. Just yeah, 31. Just that out there. So this fight, uh, two, of the, two of the Pokemon have Sturdy and our answer to that, which was our original answer and then it wasn't our answer, but now it's our answer again, is uh, Stealth Rock. Uh, Stealth Rock is an entry hazard, so every time the Pokemon comes into the field, it will take it'll take rock type damage but it will at least take some damage and it will always um break sturdy essentially also another instance of taunt to prevent trick room uh yeah, which is the which again here. more more competitive ish move sets from our friends here ah, i see level 30 is going to come in handy i'm actually going to get a two shot without blaze does this have yeah. proof or is this le uh, levitate it's levitate Okay. Jeez, that does nothing. Yeah, so a, at level 29, it's very rare to get a two-shot unless you get Blaze, um, which is why I like having the regular potion, because then you're, you have a decent chance to actually get the Blaze um, values. But now we got rid of our... We got rid of the Trick Rumor, because Byron's Pokemon have absolutely no speed. Which oh, you missed, like, you taunted there. Oh, 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 oh gosh. Oh, it felt like it's bad if you if you crit flamethrower in that exact scenario. <laughs> crit burn or something. Uh, the Steelix dies immediately. It's the Bastiodon that's the problem. We It's also holding a Citrus Berry, so we can't just click Grass Knot twice. We have to set up and then click Grass Knot. The problem yeah. is, is he has a move called Stone Edge, which is a high critical hit chance move. So it's one in eight to crit us, um, which would be bad. It's also inaccurate. Um, the good yeah. thing about the metronome is, uh, well, we're not using it here, but just to explain for later, it doesn't lose its effect if you use items. It's only if you use other moves. Um, I don't know if that still comes into play in this route, but uh, you would be able to set up uh, and still keep the metronome boost, which is nice. But with choice in specs, this, it just gets In this down. case, we're choice spec, yeah. So it was good. He used Iron Defense, which saves me yet another uh, another heal. Yeah, it's very nice to get that. So Byron was actually very kind to me. That was a that was a good gym. The, yeah, the extra Dawn monkey really experience. That, see, see, it was calculated to hit the uh, extra spinner to have to center heal to get the extra experience on monkey to save exactly one turn. On this, on this gym. Well, possibly save a turn. Could have crit, could have burned, could have eye rolled. And now we go to the library. A place that is very fun to me because it is here where I discovered how to do that one mission in Legends Arceus without having to look it up on the internet. I had the, That was like the only thing I had to look up in Legends Arceus was the Manaphy. Shout out to... Uh, um, Etiquette's Mod Sheep for giving me a like a good riddle to like give me a clue to figure it out without having to look up. It still took me like a week, but I was just like, wait a second. <laughs> wait a second. Do I have to look for the answer in a different game? And thankfully, uh, thankfully I had a save file that literally just finished Byron. <laughs> so I was just like right there. It's like, oh, hey, I could just go into the library and find what I need. Felt pretty smart about that, not gonna lie. I do love me some Legends Arceus. It was the uh, the most fun I've had with casual Pokemon in a long time. Etiquette had a really fun time until he deleted his save file. No. We'll talk about that. I like to believe I was one of the people who had like the most shinies on week of release because I got so absurdly lucky on shinies while I was doing like speedrun testing stuff. <laughs> it was really funny. I got like five within an hour or something at one point. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> uh, hell. 
All right, now we're going to teach our last move, which is our Fairy-type move. Dazzling Gleave, which is also a spread move. It hits... So in double battles, it hits uh, two people at once. Gleam is so useful for this run. Um, Psychic's biggest downfall is not being able to hit the Dark Types at all, and Dazzling Gleam hits all of them for at least neutral. Uh, yeah, and then... It, Having the spread moves is amazing for all the double fates because there's going to be quite a few of them coming up. Yeah, it's nice to have super effective against poison, but even if there's a... It also helps with... or It's not very effective against poison, but it's super effective against dark. And mm -hmm. there's quite a few, uh, you know, the scum tanks in particular. Yeah, like the other ba the only other real option to hit the scum tanks would be shockwave, and it's just like so much weaker and runs into issues. Picking up an item in my... the dark, rare candy. Come on. We're also, here. not trolling, actually going to be opening up a poke at app. I, uh, I need to see my, my step count there. Slowly getting it <laughs> open. We'll see it soon. <laughs> it's like one more. There we go. Even 34 is what I was. Uh, just going to play this spinner safe. Yeah, if now, you're just wondering, keep in mind, yeah. the super repels last 200 steps. And that's that's all you need to know right now. About to be literally cheating in the speedrun and calling it glitchless. <laughs> I'm going to throw there, up. There's, you know... I used to still do the puzzle normally. And, <laughs> <laughs> and even with the answer, the like the maps exactly in front of me, I still, like, couldn't do it. It was just so bad. Shout out to our community for being like, let's just allow this. <laughs> You'll see in about 15 minutes. Yeah, that sounds about right. What we're doing actually now is a bit of a detour, uh, and it's to help with experience. Um, what we're supposed to do is that, like, explosion that happened while we are at the library was Team Galactic is trying to capture the Lake Trio legendaries, so we've been tasked to go to all three of the lakes and figure out what they're doing and take care of some of the plot points. Uh, but we're going a little out of our way to go up towards snow points. Um, a, to just get the fly point and then start doing the, uh, the lake quests. But we do have to do a couple of these fights along the way. There's there's what there's just the two, but it's yep. just enough experience uh, that it helps out with a couple fights uh, in a big way. Yeah, basically, uh, and this is actually a detour that's not possible in Platinum. It is possible in the originals, uh, Diamond and Pearl, but not in Platinum. Um, and so we those two fights plus the two rare candies that we just picked up um are going to allow us with addition of the rare candy that we got right before byron um gonna allow us to hit level 46 before the mars fight at lake verity um and that is very nice threshold to hit um because it gives us enough speed to outspeed the perugly and also like tpat mentioned way earlier um it increases the range on both perugly and bronzor to 14 and 16 and 15 and 16 so um, it basically turns what would normally be like a five turn fight that's a little dangerous into a three turn fight with a couple of ranges. Also, really quick, can we give anti shout outs to Rock Climb just being an item ball in the middle of the snowstorm? Oh my god, it's so dumb. Anti shout outs to Rock Climb, dude. It's, <laughs> it's also real bad that Fly is in the warehouse, but it's not yeah. pointed out. And I can't tell you how many casual players have like come to me and been like, I can't find Fly. And it's like, yeah, well, in Platinum, they fixed it because they make Looker pull you into the warehouse and say, this is Fly, you should have this. <laughs> like, literally, that cutscene's in the game because people couldn't figure out where Fly was. Yeah. Yeah, the HMs aren't given to you oh, really in this game, games. which is interesting. Can you, no, can you skip Rock Smash? I don't remember. I don't think you can skip Rock Smash and then cut, I think, is the only other one that's actually, like, give... Actually, Surf is given to you, too. Surf yeah. is given to you. Strength is skippable. Yeah. Rock Climb is skippable. Fly is skippable. Defog is skippable. 
and there's no dive. Yeah. Like half the HM you can just skip without knowing. This is the second time we get to do this movement. And I did it much better that time. Also, that spinner at the bottom there doesn't have max range. You can just pass on the left. Yeah, that's going to come into play with the people I'm passing literally right now. Yeah, there's a lot of spinners that don't have max range. Like this one. You can yep. just hug the bottom. She can't see you. Not this one. This one can see you. I'm getting a bit unlucky. It's a good repel spot. Actually, I'm way ahead on repels or repel steps, so I'm actually very safe. At least poor Magikarp. I'm just flopping around. Yeah, they really excavated this lake for no reason. Yeah. They should have called in uh, Team Magma. They could work together. <laughs> Get rid of the water. <laughs> they said. Yeah. Water sucks. Fun fact about Saturn. Uh, we fight him twice, and he's got the exact same team both times. Not the levels, right? Just the... Not the levels. Yeah, yeah. But the exact same three Pokemon. I think Mars 2 and the, the double fight is also the same. Um... Yes. Golbat, Golbat, Perugly, and, um, and, and Bron Bronzor. Okay, we are not going to make the mistake that I made last time in practice. <laughs> it's a... Listen, kids, it is very, very, very important that you uh, call your mom. Well, I need to swap held items first, getting ahead of myself. Uh, you should always talk to your mom. Like, that's just good life advice. And as is with good life advice, it's also good speedrunning advice. You should always talk to your mom. And in this case, it also happens to be my mom's birthday. So I'm going to tell my mom happy birthday on her birthday. Because if you don't, bad things will happen. Like, real bad things. Just, just throwing that out there. So we went to the first lake. Uh, here is the second lake. This one has a really interesting double battle, I guess. It's funny in the uh, in the first patch of this game, you had control of your character before the vision was active, so you could actually just run past these guys. Uh, and then we were like, "No, nah, can't do that in glitch, guys. Don't even think about it." Sure, you can skip gym puzzles, but you can't skip double battles. Correct. Listen, I don't make the rules, I just follow them. <laughs> well, so my justification for it was this felt like something they would patch out, which they did. They did patch it out. Um, it, I didn't... For me personally, I didn't want us to have something that got patched out be part of the run, because obviously, like, we had the whole issue with time like things a patch take making things take longer with like sword and shield and having to deal with that so i just wanted to try to avoid that and i mean the game hasn't received an update in a while and this has been patched out but the gym puzzle has not they released a new update and repels are deleted from the game oh my god be awful we couldn't Stop fix the bugs so removed repels. couldn't couldn't find a way to fix the gym puzzle Uh, no, I'm gonna energy root that. Also, this fight's a great example of the fun menuing of this game when you're swapping between, like, the item bag, the X item bag, Pokemon Makes news. no sense in double fights specifically. A what? The swapping back and forth. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, wants a menu on this patch of grass. 
Uh, no, I want to... Oh my god. Okay, there we go. Now, this double fight, however, uh, these two are doing a very poor job at what they should be doing. Pop the items, put the monkey away. Calcium up, and then gonna use all the candies here to 46. Yeah, me, these two are doing a real bad job. They forgot I can just surf around them. Yeah. So hitting 46 there just makes this fight a lot more consistent. Um, I forget the ranges. It's like 15 and 16 for the Progly, right? And, then... and 14 and 16 on the Bronzor. And okay, we outspeed yeah. Progly by exactly one speed point. Yeah, the speed's kind of what matters more. Um, the Progly does have U-Turn. That's the most dangerous move it has. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it turns out that that's... Uh, that hurts! Quite a bit. Yeah, so with a bit of luck, this is a pretty easy fight, but with some bad luck, uh, you know, could be bad. Well, I've hit all my 15 and 16 ranges so far today. You may have more um, special attack from just the IVs from the optional you hit. May have been a 16 out of 16 there. It gives me that one threshold. Oh, I crit the Bronzor anyway, so... Nice. We'll never knew. We'll never know. Yeah, what, did, what EVs did you get from that fight? It was a uh, Luxray, which I think gives you attack. Defense from the uh, Onyx. Onyx, yeah. And Motham's the lead. What's Motham give? Probably special defense. Motham gives it. an attack and special attack, apparently. Okay. So I have one more special attack. Ooh. It's gonna matter. We can meme that for the rest of the run. This is going to be very fun. Every range you hit... Oh, the Motham came in clutch. <laughs> I got a little lost there for a sec. I forget what you said. I think it was 34? Yeah, it's a huge map. I'm also here. gonna get a little lost here. Yeah. So this puzzle's uh, very complicated or something, I don't know. But yeah, I'm just gonna walk over here and ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> the walker right on by. <laughs> right on by. Yeah, so Repel stops your movement and asks you if you want to use another one, and he can just cheese the whole puzzle. Takes There's exactly, a lot of ways you can cheese it. Takes exactly seven Repel steps to make it to that point. So I like entering the gym with. 10 or fewer actually mm -hmm. cheating actually cheating hey the community yeah. said that's not a glitch so there's a lot I of still have, i still have the actual puzzle in my notes it they haven't done it in forever yeah yeah you can skip uh, it also with like a weird control stick angle or by just beating the game in 10 minutes without ever coming to candace so you have a <laughs> lot of options I believe it was patched out, the weird, like, stick angle, like, oh. diagonal movement. I think that was patched out. Yeah, no clue. It's but weird they patched that doesn't... and not this, but whatever. Yeah. The Sneasel does outspeed us, but it typically goes for the low-priority avalanche, so... Mm. Nice. Mm. Yeah, not the only ice puzzle <laughs> with the skip in Gen 8. Or in the series, there's three gyms with ice puzzles that have issues. Yeah, true. Because black and white has the... the oh, yeah. The... You just walk yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. Is that glitch, glitch even from... hard or is it just like... No, you, you just, just walk through. It just doesn't have collision. Like, there's nothing to it, it's just, it looks like a wall that isn't a wall. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, Candace isn't too bad, it's just, don't don't get crit by the Sneasel or something. Well, don't get hit by Avalanche and then have the Sneasel not use Avalanche, so there's always a chance. It's funny, Gen 3 is the only, like, non-issued ice puzzle. It's like... Shout out to the first game doing it right. <laughs> yeah, what's the issue with the uh, the crystal one? 
It's I thought it was just like the spinner is annoying. I guess Crystal's fine too, yeah. Crystal's fine, it's just like the spinner Douglas is kind of an awkward yeah. guy. Yeah, nice and annoying. You can also cheese it by moving trainers and then bonking into them. Just don't put ice physics in your game, kids. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what it boils down to. Ice physics yeah. bad. I mean, has anyone ever said, oh yeah, Mario, I love the ice physics in that game. <laughs> so I visited all three lakes. Uh, I found all three of the admins there. Um, so now I'm kind of chasing them back to their headquarters, which is in Veilstone. Thank God this guy drops the storage key. Oh, world is almost He's over. A, he, he, he was like having an existential crisis or something. He's like, maybe we are the bad guys. <laughs> and he's like, here, you can have it. It's also really funny that that storage key, when you try to use it, it's just like, it didn't work. But the door's broken anyway, so you just kind of forced it open, and, and there you go. It's like actually what the text says. Also, absolute banger in here. Yeah. Probably, probably best evil theme in the game, to be honest. I was getting excited for spinners. There's a lot in this segment. This is the first of like five or six, I think. The, uh, uh, yeah, the infamous etchy spinner is coming up. Yep. <laughs> uh, and then the worst one is the one where you have to pass the spinner, fight the other guy, and it's backwards in the original game because the, uh, the right trainer, you, in the original, didn't have vision that went all the way across, but in here he does. So he actually does see his teammates, so he can't cheese it. You, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Thankfully, the battles in Galactic HQ are all, like, super easy. And this is the part of the game where we start to notice that our main doesn't need a whole lot of setup. And it's not just because we're fighting grunts. Like, even on Candace, I only needed one X special attack to win the fight. Yeah, Cadaver's really good if it can survive. Like, it has, like well over 100 special attack it's very fast um here's the fun spinner by the way but uh yeah because that was just very good and because we get the trade xp uh it's super over leveled now which is really nice the it is the most noticeable in victory road where we don't have to use a single x special attack the whole time yeah. on any of the trainers because never also gets really good coverage Psychic Ghost Fairy is, like, already really good. And and it, that's just what made this the difference over the Scyther route, is that the Scyther route still has to use its fair share of sword stances. It's still a good Pokemon, but Cadaver just starts getting insanely fast when you're just Okoing everything with no setup. Yeah. Also, shots of this fight being skippable in the originals, because you could sit on the chairs. No, you can't. <laughs> You just walk right over the chairs. <laughs> True, chills. yeah. You wouldn't sit on them, but you could just go over them. I've always found that like weird about the Pokemon universe. Like, one, they have a child saving the world, but two, like, come on, just like climb over the chairs, you're fine. Or like, you can do it. Just like walk around the small like thing. Just like you know, walk sideways. <laughs> you can make it through that gap. Come on. Or just run. Like, if you sprint fast enough, you don't have to fight this guy. <laughs> he won't be able to stop oh. you in time. Yo, shout-outs to the Let's Go community. Yeah, just ride on a Pokemon fast enough to avoid them. True. Yeah, Etchy uh, figured that out. I, I guess was mad enough about the spinner here. I was like, I'm just going to run past everyone now. <laughs> Precisely. He not only skips spinners, he skips mandatory trainers now. <laughs> <laughs> just... Absolutely busted. I'll be honest, I'm really excited for Trade Alt Main Aerodactyl in Let's Go. Alright, so here's the clever 
fight one or the other, but we only have one option. So I'm gonna, so I tried to bait the first spinner to look back up. If he does look up, I just dart down, uh, take the two second time loss of the explanation point. Uh, but in this case, since he decided to not look back up, I got to talk to him. So yeah, this trainer has vision all the way across and is mandatory. So even if I got the other spinner to walk up like you do in Gen 4, you, you would still have to fight this guy. Oh, that means they're doing a glitch in the glitchless route in Gen 4 because they patched it in this game. So clearly, <laughs> walking down, there's a glitch, and we should retroactively go back and <laughs> change the rules. Like saying the first glitch in the game is picking Bulbasaur. Honestly, it is for some runs. But they patched the polka flute in Fire Red Leaf Green. <laughs> True. So <that's> the... <laughs> True. And the polka doll skip. I love just taking a nap in the evil team headquarters. <laughs> Actually <laughs> optimal. Just just take a little snooze. I am going to grab the safety full restore. I mean, have you haven't you ever fixed your PC and just found a full restore inside of it? I hope I hope that that uh <laughs> I hope that that terminal isn't like busted that I took its full restore out of it. I'm gonna be honest, there's so many like weird hidden items in these games. Like they make <laughs> such little sense. Oh, so here's where a uh, Dazzling Gleam becomes a good move. Well, already has been useful a couple times, but these double fights is like really interesting and useful. Yeah, even though, well, in this case, it's neutral effective on both because it's super effective against fighting in dark, but not very effective against the poison. Yeah. So how convenient for them to have the appropriate type combination to make Fairy still a busted move in all generations of Pokemon games that it's existed. Yeah. Fairy type is just so ridiculous. Like whenever Pokemon adds something new, it's like it gets power creep so hard. Like fairy type. Why is it like why is this fairy resist bug? Like, please explain. It didn't need to. Yeah, I have to heal here because of all these sucker punches. It's such a like big risk. Hey yo, that's a that's a big raid. Welcome in everyone. Welcome to the Pokemon Speedrunning Marathon 2021 or 2022. I've, I've already messed it up. Let me be honest, what year is it anymore? Right? <laughs> it's yeah, all already, it's all already a big scuffed. blur. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, welcome in. This is the Brilliant Diamond Glitchless Speedrun. With some banging music. Yeah, just in time for kind of the scarier fights of the run, honestly. Got the uh, the fun segment here. And of course, with me, I'm T Pat. I got Etiquette, Shen, and Nerd. Uh, all terrific speedrunners. And I just think it's funny that you've all done the glitch category. But whoa, I whoa, whoa, so... whoa, whoa. I have done one glitchless run. I've done a few. <laughs> and and I have done zero. <laughs> so we just got a mix match of some BDSP. Yeah. So this is our first fight against Cyrus. Uh, again, Kadabra really coming into its own. Everything is just an easy one shot. Uh, the only small thing is that the Sneasel does speed tie us, um, but to no danger. We would we would take a marginal amount of damage. Yeah, right now it's not that scary. Uh, later on, it would be very bad if the Sneasel outsped. I'm, I'm the, the next Cyrus fight is the fight I'm the most nervous about of the entire run. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's like one of the scariest fights in like almost any Pokemon speedrun, I would say. I would say it's also one of the most scary fights for a marathon run specifically. Yeah. Yeah, just like such a bad fight. Uh, you have to do a double battle right before it, and then uh, watch a like pretty long cutscene. Uh, I think it's like a minute long, 
and then do the fight. And if you and die, you're forced into it. Yeah, you cannot save before the Cyrus fight, so you just have to win it your first try, and now, it's hard. <laughs> Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, what if you just lose to the fight, but don't reset and just climb the mountain? You still have to do the double fight again. Yeah. The double fight is not cleared. It is all, like, one event. So it turns out Team Galactic stole the... the, the, the Lake Trio, and they're making the Red Chain. Good in Legends Arceus. Bad when the evil team is using it for world domination. Who would have thought... This part's always so backwards to me. Like, we fight the, the actual boss first, and then we have his, his lackey afterward. Yeah. Like, it should be the other way around. It really well, should. The boss is busy getting a razor claw, a... Uh, oh, my God. A dust stone. <laughs> this is true. Stone. <laughs> he, like, he does have to random. evolve his whole team. He and then he's got to go... Like, stupid move sets on them. And then, and then yeah. he's got to go uh, fish up a magic carp and evolve it. He's trying so hard to figure out what, like, love and, like... All that is to get the Golbat to evolve. It's like, what's happening? No, he does have a Crobat. Try to research that frantically. <laughs> Cyrus actually underflows the happiness. <laughs> That's that probably what it is. <laughs> Wait, are you saying this glitch run this whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if the if the enemy underflows and uses a glitch is the whole run a glitch yeah every time you fight cyrus your run is over unfortunately there's no true glitchless anymore <laughs> Darn. have to compromise as a community now <laughs> you can also look at the other it. way like maybe cyrus is secretly like, super nice to all his pokemon he's like doting on the crowbat his whole life and got super excited when it evolved you know, See maybe it? deep down Cyrus is human after all. So yeah, Galactic HQ is really is nothing, you know, nothing big going on. But I do get to visit Route 207 and do some movement again, which is always no fun for literally anyone. Uh, I'm actually going to use a Super Potion. So this movement is incredibly hard to do optimally. Oh yeah. We'll we'll see how good I can do it. Back even such a pain, and there's like I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it safe. But okay, it's already safe. Yeah, there's spinners. There's a guy running in circles his whole life for some reason. It's just not a fun route. Yeah, not a fun route. That's why you see me dismount to yeah uh, get a more just more precise movement off the bike. Um, and that's just a comfort level for me. I do that a lot, um, either in caves. You'll see me do that in the second room in Victory Road. I'll literally just run the whole thing because there's so... Plus, there's so much, like, strength bouldering, too. And the bike has that really, really slow startup on the first tile. That I just think it's just faster to walk most of it. anti shoutouts to this ledge as well has killed many a run. Yeah, I was a little extra careful on it. Yeah, it's just like one tile, and sometimes it just snaps you to the There's ledge. Another like, one. Jump. There's another one here. <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. Uh, not just killed many a run, killed many a casual playthrough. There there were some clips going around Twitter of people being super frustrated at that. Yeah, that one when right When the game there. first came out. Two more... So you, so you did see me dismount the bike again there, and that was to help influence that spinner to look to the right so I could get a safe pass uh, immediately afterwards. And it, the timing usually sets up well that I can make the that like runner rotator pass pretty well too. It just it's all comfort when it comes to the movement of this section. It's just whatever works best for you works best for you. In this case, I'm actually going to stay in the low gear because I want to, like, bonk on all these things and then not accidentally run into <laughs> the spinner, as you saw right here. Yeah, this trainer here is, like, kind of awkward to get behind. Yeah. Just, just like kinda. here. Yeah, it all comes down to some... Here as well. The, yeah, there's know. a lot of comfort level movements yeah, up Mount Cornet. Great. Grab a rare candy here. This is kind of a no thanks. Sneaky... Oh, you skip it now. I didn't even nah. realize. No, nah, we're not. We got enough. Okay. Um, 
But yeah, normally you would rock climb twice there because it's faster because you don't have to go through the uh, rock climb startup text the second time you do it in like a map, but uh, just doing it once there so I don't get to see that. Yeah, not necessary for any more rare candies toward Kadabra or the uh, Dialga. Yeah. I remember it used to be pretty important to get the candies on Dialga, but I guess now it's skippable with like route improvements and whatnot. Yeah, I have, I have Etiquette a lot to thank for that. Um, because when you did the uh, the brilliant diamond routing, uh, I took a lot of notes from that. Because the biggest challenge for me was skipping Dragon Claw. Um, because I would use Dialga for Volkner, uh, which is much safer, but you need to get to level 48 to start the fight. Because so, that's the level that it learns Dragon Claw at. And I'd pick a rare, a rare candy up for that, but it's like, eh, just, just use the Kadabra, it's fine. Uh, and Kadabra is still faster, just literally one turn riskier. Like, you have one turn you could get crit on. So, everything's pretty calm right now, but in about two minutes, it's going to be not very calm. Yeah. Because uh, the two, I would say the two most difficult fights of the game, mm -hmm. uh, and definitely the most frustrating fight in almost all of Pokemon. I think it's like a top three, like top yeah. three or top five worst fights in Pokemon is coming up. And that's the Mars and Jupiter double battle, which funny enough, if you were 1v2 against Mars and Jupiter, the fight would be fine. But you are 2v2 with your, with your partner, Barry, and Barry's really bad. Barry is just a loose cannon cop. He just does what he wants and can mess up your strategy. Part of the problem is the lead. Like, if Barry led not a Munchlax, it would be a lot better. Like, imagine Barry if Barry just led the Star Led his Star Raptor. <laughs> exactly. If he led yeah, Star, Raptor, Star Raptor, I think it would be great. Like, he does on every other fight. Just yeah. can throw that out there. <laughs> I remember uh, I was doing like really early routing of this game and one of my strats was to just KO the Munchlax. It was like better to just get it off the field and an, just... An, an optimal strat in a lot of the Gen 4 games, I think the Staraptor route does exactly that. It's just like, mm -hmm. get rid of your Munchlax or the Clefairy. It's just yeah, like, this Clefairy is this too. is only going to hinder me. Uh, it's not quite as viable, and in situations can save you a turn. Like, for example, if you're, like, fully set up and then Barry kills the Bronzor on that turn, then it's like, okay, you saved me a turn. But it is quite the hassle. So we are at the top of Mount Cornet. Uh, fun fact, the, the actual pillars are a mirror image, uh, whether you're playing uh, Shining Pearl or Brilliant Diamond. They are flip-flopped. This is not the fate we've been referring to. It is the next fate. Uh, this yeah. one's just pretty free with Dazzling Gleam. But... This fight, actually, funny enough, we effectively use Monferno to KO the Dustox here. Because Dazzling Gleam cannot kill Dustox, but we have a move called Flamethrower. And that will finish it off. Yeah, this is very much the calm before the storm. Like, like the winds are the winds are blowing right now. Whatever. All right, so, so yeah, this next fight is the Mars and Jupiter double battle. It is the most frustrating and one of the most dangerous fights in Pokemon. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to cancel the Monferno evolution because I revived it early. Yeah, just barely hitting 36. Yeah. Thanks to thought the I, could actually, I actually thought I wouldn't um, make it there. Still faster to cancel the evolution than to have it fully play out. Yeah. Because if it fully plays out, then it tries to learn close combat again. Again. Yep. yep. It also, I don't think it would run into issues with the... Uh... No, it shouldn't run into issues with like using it later, but yeah. So essentially, here we got six Pokemon on Mars and Jupiter. They each have three, and the simple idea is to focus on one side 
to get rid of all of, all three of one of those Pokemon, ideally Mars's, and then go to the other side and finish the sweep. However, if Barry is attacking like both sides at the same time, like the Perugly and the Skuntank could appear on the field at the same time, and that's when it gets really dangerous. Uh, we want to have the Bronzors stay on the field as much as possible because they do the lowest amount of damage. Okay. Of course, heal to full and definitely save. And like I said, if, if Barry didn't attack, if Barry wasn't even our partner, there would be no risk of the Bronzors fainting early, allowing us to fairly safely set up barring crits and then focus on one side and then the other. But here we have to kind of keep in mind what Barry is doing. We preferably will attack the right side first, but if Barry is going on all left, then we got to go all left. And, and that's just that. Uh, these Bronzors have payback. They can do about 20 damage. Reflect is probably the best case scenario because it does limit the amount of damage Barry can do with Bite. Okay, there's Reflect. Light Screen can uh, happen. Um, the, basically, one Bronzor has Reflect, okay. one has Light Screen. Light Screen isn't the end of the world, even I'm though we're I'm using going special, so... I'm going left because Barry hit left twice, so I'm going to set up the plus four. Uh, I'm yep. going to heal on this turn. Yeah, he's going all left, which is fine. If he goes all on one side, like, we can handle that. Yeah, and then uh, heal this turn. Hopefully he goes left again. Um, if he goes the main reason eight, why you don't want left but you usually don't want to see left first is because Jupiter will send out her Skun Tank, and Skun Tank uh, is the only Pokemon we don't one shot. Um, of course, I will because I took the time to go to plus four, and Light Screen is not on the field. Okay. Um, that was kind of my like safety strat. Was like if I get Light Screen here, uh, I'll still be able to KO the Skun Tank. I think it would it would have been a range in this case, but I uh, I was I played. Oh no, nope, it still didn't die. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's not. Because the the main uh, reason why sir. it matters which side you go like through first is because Dazzling Beam is a spread move. Um, so it has a damage reduction um, when it hits two targets. I do here. It's still possible. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to take the... I'm going to sacrifice Kadabra here just to get rid of... Oh, I got rid of them both yeah. on the same turn. That's what I was thinking, uh, because... Yeah, Gleam might be... plus good. three, so plus three Gleam can KO can the Can the Perugly, yeah. Okay, that worked out. I think I heal this turn now, because I have two Golbats on the field. Unless you think Dazzling Gleam gets them, but... Oh, no, definitely there's not. Definitely, definitely no definitely chance not, so. on, the, on the Golbats. I would heal and then... So yeah, the Golbats yeah. have Haze, so they can... I got credit. Ooh. So I have revives. Oh, I lived on one, though. It's wow. It's interesting I... that going for U-turn, even though it's their best move, they usually don't like to use U-turn. You could U -turn. maybe just kill one of them. It's fine, because they'll die to Psy Shocks or... Yeah. Um... So best case scenario here is Barry actually helps me out by KOing the right one since he attacked it twice. Okay. Yeah, just uh, just psychic the left one and you're good. Yeah, psychic left is GG. That, yeah, that crit was a little scary. I'm surprised I actually lived the crit, to be honest. But that... Hey, remember that, that on was... hit earlier that you hit on the optional for uh, defense TV? I remember. Sure. Yep, the, Onyx, okay, that's, the defense uh, EV made you live, and the, the special attack EV, I think, from the Mothim guaranteed yeah, that, that Perugly. Yeah, that the Perugly, for sure. All right, so if you thought oh. that fight was bad... <laughs> Let me tell um, you about Cyrus. So Cyrus has... Uh, we, we were talking earlier about um, the, the Gyarados on Route 215 being awful, because it's like, you know, a level 23 Gyarados in the rain with Waterfall. Um, 
this lead Pokemon is just cruel. So, <laughs> he... <laughs> yep. so Cyrus leads a Honchcrow. Honchcrow has the ability Super Luck, Super Luck, which will increase its critical hit chance. Um, it's holding the scope lens item, which will increase its critical hit chance. And it only has increased hit critical hit chance moves. And so if you add all of those up, uh, you end up with, oh, wait, 100% chance to critical hit. Mm -hmm. So it is impossible to set up on the Honchkrow without dying. Um, so the strategy here is literally get rid of the Honchkrow as fast as possible. Deal as much damage as you can to Gyarados and die. And then revive... Your I love that your reward for killing the Honchkrow is to, to be face to face with a Gyarados. Yeah. With Waterfall and Crunch. Yeah. And <laughs> if if we still had Shockwave, we could use it. Except, uh oh, it has a Wackenberry, which like reduces electric <laughs> moves, you know, effectiveness for one turn. So yep. it's like it's a horrible fight. Um, you have to revive. As the Monferno, you revive the Kadabra, and then you bring the Kadabra back in and KO the Gyarados. Crobat comes out, usually likes to quick claw Tailwind, which is stupid. <laughs> um, and then the Weavile is the dangerous thing. There are a lot of other ways this fight can go, but we're not going to mention any of them <laughs> until we get through the fight. Let's just yeah. enjoy the music, because I love, I love Cyrus's theme. Yeah, this part of the game is just evil. <laughs> I will also mention very quickly that when I use my Revival Herb, I must not misclick, period. Because if yes. I try to Revival Herb Monferno, it will not work, I will waste my turn, and I will die. Full stop. Yes. Best thing they ever did was make it so you cannot use an item. It's... Like, yes, it I used to be... Use an item that's important. not doing anything. It will just not do anything. Shit, like, that was the that was the turn the fertile lift power of love lift. It was there, yeah. It was yeah, right there. Here. It was ridiculous. It's like what do I what do was, with this? What new was founder? also weird about that is that since I lived, I d I went to like just use taunt or something. It resets Kadabra's uh, fight menu, so I ended up accidentally wow. clicking psychic instead of uh, psy shock. Psy shock, yeah. Which meant that I was killed, one or? psychic short and I had to center heal. Okay, still killed, but okay. <laughs> okay, quick claw oh. killing. Okay. okay. Yup. This is this is interesting. <laughs> so when this fight ends, I'm gonna rattle off everything else that can happen and Yep. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. Well this is gonna be on the list. Come on. <laughs> yep, so we just this is so far. Ick. Nice, nice, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Liter okay, just do not crit. Yes! Okay. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so things that can happen <laughs> on that fight. Um, the Gyarados can switch out when it's faced against the uh, Kadabra and switch into the Weavile, eating your Psychic, and then you have to sort of do this weird fight where you set up on the Weavile and get through the rest of it. Um, it can switch out when you're staring down the Monferno, which is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I think I've seen that once, and I'm just the like, huh? The Crobat can U-turn uh, into the Weavile, eating your Psychic, and then you have yep. to um, set up on the Weavile, and then the Crobat has Cross Poison, so your X-Defend like could not matter. Like There are so many different ways that fight can go. Um, T-Pat had it where he, like, Power of Love lived against the Gyarados. Um, I've never seen Monferno that. <laughs> yeah, if you crit the Gyarados and knock him into heal range, it's over. Like, it, it's actually one of those crits where it's like, you don't want. So what we actually do there is you can use either Psychic or Psy Shock. Psychic um, never knocks him into heal range unless it critical hits, and in which case it will always knock it into heal range, but never KO. Psy Shock never knocks him into heal range unless it critical hits, but a crit can kill. So Psy Shock, Psy Shock is technically a little bit better um, because if you do get the crit and KO, you obviously skip the heal range, you skip having to do the revive stuff and everything is fine. Um, but there's so much that can go wrong. And if we die to that fight, we go back to we the go... double fight. Yeah, and we saw all the good that one went. All right, did you see what I did? I saw yeah, breadsticks. Bread it was good. Shout out to breadsticks. Yeah, you're welcome. Are we going to all of uh, the again after this one? <laughs> 
I still have breadsticks on my Switch. Ooh, that's fancy. Yeah, so uh, that was fun with all the like GDQ runs and stuff. We always used to wonder trade the Pokemon at the end. Yeah. See if anyone gets lucky. Uh, this will this will come up in a couple minutes, but please use all of your bless emotes for 90 speed. Nine zero speed. I want 90 speed on the Dialga. It is 69% to have 90 speed, and I've only gotten it like once out of the last dozen Dialgas I've seen. 19 speed, got it. Minus, <laughs> minus DV or uh, minus nature 19. Oh, actually, that's a good point. We didn't mention that. So Kadabra's ability is synchronized, which basically came into play one time during the run because we were able to synchronize the like uh, burn or not. on Fantina, which actually lost us time, but whatever. Um, Synchronize also has the side effect that wild Pokemon will have the same nature as that Pokemon. And so because our Kadabra is always a quiet nature, which is plus special attack minus speed, our Dialga or in Shining Pearl Palkia will always have a quiet nature as well. Um, is the minus speed or is it guaranteed? Uh, it is guaranteed. Oh, it's guaranteed. guaranteed. Yeah. Games. Yeah. Um, a lot of like a lot of competitive hunters like will use like synchronize on all of their like Ralts. To yeah, yeah. Get yeah. the correct natures from wild Pokemon. Yeah. And so um, the minus speed is a little unfortunate, but it like adds a couple turns. The plus special attack is by far the best thing about it. Yeah. Um, we it's, could... it's a real shame because if the if this Kadabra was an, a modest nature like it should be, mm -hmm. it would it would make the Alga much much better. Yeah, exactly. The Palkia only has like two things that the speed matters for. Um, Same, but they're actually different things. Right. Yeah, because you don't have to worry about Bertha, or right. But you do have to worry about Flint and Cynthia. Cynthia. So when I mission. yeah. So weirdly enough, 90 speed is at level 47 is 20 IV. So like I said, you're 50 50 to have a 31 IV because it's a legendary. Um, so 69 percent in total. Uh, having that 20 IV allows me to only have to go to plus two and not plus four on Flint and Cynthia. At 18 IV, I must go at plus four. At 19 IV, it's one and the other, but I am just so defeated at that point that I just don't care. It's Shouldn't just like I just eat the extra turn. Yeah, legendaries have three perfect stats uh, since generation six. So uh, this dialogue will always have three stats that are 31. And because there's six stats, you're just 50% that speed is perfect. And then even if it's not perfect, it's still almost a coin flip to be fine. The the one out of the last 12 Dialgas I've seen that actually had the good enough speed is in my record run, and it's exactly 90. I have exactly 20 IV, which saves me two turns. And that's exactly, the run yeah. where you actually see it in my split comparison. I go into the Elite Four almost 40 seconds behind, and I come out like 25 ahead like i just saved a massive amount of time like this most clutch e4 comeback in a record run ever yeah, it's funny it's optimal not to have the 31 in speed because like 18 or was it 19 iv or whatever is good enough so it's like you'd rather get the 31 in like hp defense special attack attack or whatever if I get it in HP and defense, particularly defense, I could save a turn on Flint by only yeah. having to go to plus two instead of the safer plus four defense. But it does depend on his, him not going for hypnosis on the turn I attack or yeah. missing hypnosis, which is more difficult than you think because he has, actually is holding a wide lens, you know, good old competitive, you know, competitive items and such. Oh, I forgot. Can you you can check for thirty one hit points. Uh, you you do a party menu at one point, right? Uh, I do a heal menu uh, before, but we will basically see all of the stats on level up, which is after I KO the Raichu. Yeah, true. I guess you find out before the gym leader at least. Well, I'm not using Dialga for the gym leader. 
Right. I don't, use, I don't use Dialga until Barry. Literally the final six fights of the game. Yeah. Uh, but it is the first fight that is different between the two versions, because Shining Pearl will use Palkia for Volknir, which is kind of funny using the water type legendary and the electric type gym. But then again, this is actually the steampunk gym. <laughs> Uh, there are two spinners in the gym. One I will take very safe, one I will absolutely not. We all know which one you're going to take very safe. <laughs> Four Pikachu's. It's the one Four I Pikachu. hit in the GDQ run. <laughs> it's exactly right. Hi, I'm big Pikachu fan. Check out my team of all Pikachu's. <laughs> all? I think they're all female Pikachu's too, because they have the they little notch in the tail. All it's so funny. It's a very cute team. However, why four <laughs> Pikachu's on the spinner? This is awful. I think they all I have did, quick I did too. it. I saved a minute and a half on Etiquette's GDQ run. This is the spinner I will YOLO. That spinner I have to pass three times and he only has one Pokemon. So if you hit him on that first time, you don't even lose all that much time. Because then the next two passes, you're just, you don't even have to wait at all. Um, it's only like the last pass is kind of like 50-50 whether I risk it or not. Yeah, it's kind of like a theory with a lot of Pokemon run stuff where uh, you're going to have to wait for like 30 seconds on average to dodge the spinner, but you could just hit them and lose 10 seconds or whatever. So sometimes it's better to take the risk and maybe save like 10 or 20 seconds versus playing it safe and getting a guaranteed like 30 second loss. Mm-hmm. Going through the gym. It's kind of, it's kind of funny that, like a handful of these gyms, it's like you have to fight so many trainers. And I just remember that not being in the case in like, like Oras. Yeah, yeah. Oras is a whole other story. There's like no mandatory battles in that game, <laughs> except in Brawly's gym. Yeah, but the one gym that it would be really beneficial to skip some of those battles. Oh, one in particular. I forget, is, it's like, Sapphire is the least required battles of any Pokemon game, right? I think Alpha Sapphire is like second or third. Sounds right. I think you play like 50 total trainers or something. Yeah, because I know, I know that from, so, in Oras at least, I don't know Sapphire as, much, as well, but in Oras, gyms 6, 7, and 8 all have no trainers that you have to fight. Um, and between... So when you make it to Meteor Falls, the next mandatory non-gym or story-based trainer is in Victory Road. Like, you don't have to fight a single route trainer from Meteor yeah. Falls until Victory Road. Victory Road. Yeah, outside of gyms and evil teams. Yep. Hey, look, Sturdy Steelix is back in the electric gym. Someone checked my HP IV and said it's 0 2, which, is, uh, which means Flint is likely just going to be plus 4 then. <laughs> but on the bright side, you know you didn't get hit points as 31, so now it goes up to a 60% chance of hitting yeah. the 50% uh, or whatever on speed. Alright, here comes Spinner Parts 2 and 3. Also, Joylin in the chat doing the, the next run, Pokemon White 2 Manipolis. So if you're enjoying this, this run, gonna... stick around for that one. Okay, sweet. That was perfect. Yeah, Black and White are really cool runs. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see Manipolis stuff because, like, yeah, I haven't seen Manipolis in a lot of those games since, like, before Manips were a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been a very that long time. So long ago. Remember Embor route? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that the is that the little pup route? Uh, no, this is my, in white my big, This white is white too. Two, yeah, little pup. So up. that would be Excadrill. I don't know what they do for Manipolis, but yes, the uh, Manip run uses Excadrill. Yeah, yeah. Manip is Excadrill. That's, that's what I'm remembering run. then. So funny enough, um, for 
Volkner, we don't have to set up any X special chat attacks. We just need to set up an X speed because the Raichu outspeeds us. Big shocker, right? Now, Ambipom has the move shocker. Fake Out. Fake, <laughs> fake Out is a 40 base power move. Watch how much damage this will do to us. 80 some <laughs> odd points of damage. 80 damage from a 40 power fake out. It's ridiculous. All right, yeah. stats are coming up right here. It's stab with uh, technician, or... so it's very strong. And cadaver has no defense. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Shots in normal gem boosted fake out. That was a thing for a long time. Okay, come on, 90, 90, 90, 90. Yes! Yay. Woo! Nice job. Normal gems at least still in the game, right? Yeah, normal gem's the only gem that's still left. Uh, I did see also my special attack is 31. Uh, yeah. So that guarantees the Mr. Mime range on Lucian. Just pointing that out there. It's really dumb when you have to use plus six. Super effective, uh, um, what is it, flash cannon. And it's still a range through flight screen. It also has the filter ability in this game, right? The Mr. Mime? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so that that adds to that, it. That probably is why. Yeah, if it didn't have filter, I think it would always die. Yeah, that was one of the Pokemon. That, so, uh, the Elite Four in this game is, like, actually competitive movesets and, like, items and whatnot. And they did change some of the abilities on the Pokemon. I think the Alakazam on FI has Magic Guard as well. So they I like really almost four so IV. Only my HP is bad. Well, and attack, but that doesn't matter. Yeah, we never use attacks, especially since we routed out Dragon Claw to begin with. Mm -hmm. Careful, your special attack might be thirty, not thirty-one. If it matters, still yeah, still, still doesn't matter. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, think it, I think it doesn't matter below above twenty-two or so because I think that's where the Mister Mime. Uh, cool. becomes guaranteed. It's like the only yeah. spot. It, it's usually more of a thing for speed. Like I know in uh, in Oras, thirty speed does not outspeed the Frost Last on Glacia. Yeah, the other one does. Yeah. It's so silly. Oh, yo, Jasmine from Johto. Let's go, Johto confirmed. <laughs> Good try. Dude, it's, the... gonna be, it's gonna be brilliant heart gold and shining diamond and pearl. Oh my goodness, I just hated the Masters EX promo that looked like it was going to be Let's Go Johto, and it's just like, no, don't <laughs> give me hope, don't do it. I was about to say, T-Bay, you can't fool us twice. <laughs> that was my last energy route. I knew I was running low on them. Literally, the only but, reason I didn't fall for that was because it was too early in the direct. I was like, this is too I, early for them to drop a brand new game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they always have something on, like, Pokemon Go and Masters EX. So I like knew, but yeah. like, mm, it could have been one of these days, one of these days. Um, was it the, uh, did the previous runner say something about uh, Meganium getting a big role in Snap is kind of, uh, kind of cool. I do like the, the was it the, the, Lum the Illumina Pokemon being Meganium, it's pretty sweet. Not good for anything else. Yeah, anti shoutouts to Meganium. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if we raise, uh, someone call Meganium the Bulbasaur of Gen Two. <laughs> oh my god! It might it might have it's to be the apology. It really. Is. <laughs> it's just Grastoise. It is just Grastoise. That that's an objective fact. I will I will say it's kind of just chicory that it's garbage. <laughs> I well, mean, whose also, fault is yeah. it in Grass Types five weaknesses? Yeah, Grass is just like not a great type. They, they, on gave, they gave it five weaknesses, and then the first two things you're supposed to do in Gen two are Sprout Tower, which a Grass type isn't good for, and Faulkner, which a Grass type is not good for, <laughs> and then Bugsy, which a Grass type is not good for, yeah. and then Whitney, which a Grass type is not good for. Oh, nothing is. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're supposed to just catch the drowsy and trade it and then use the machop. Get the machop. Man, it would be really fun to do like a 
as intended crystal run or something. Oh my god, and then Morty with the full poison type team. Oh, that. Yeah, this Morty's. Is a very good point. You, uh, you mud slap Morty, I think, was the strat in Meganium percent. <laughs> when are we getting Let's Go Kenya? That's pretty funny. That's, that's really what it should be at this point. Kenya was the answer all along. Wait, is. But. So. <laughs> Kenya, you're supposed to give to the guy. So is the entire game just like you to ignoring Kenya, give it to the guy, and that's it. Just steal, just steal. <laughs> credits roll. You're, you get to like Mount Silver, and you see the uh, the guy who's normally on Mount Thirty One. He's <laughs> yeah, that's the, the, the snoozing Silver. guy. He's just and like, Red oh just hey, you've got my Pokemon you. with with you. Can I have it back now? And like Red's just like around the corner, not saying anything. Or even worse, Red, like, jumps down from, like, the heavens or something because, you know, you're outside <laughs> at the top of Mount Silver. And he's just, like, doesn't say anything, but you you know you have to fight before you can talk to the Kenya guy. <laughs> A 7k XP for the Blissey. Always the, uh, the surprise rare candy. So this is the room I do not bike in because there is a lot of rock smashes, strengths, and single tile gaps. Shout out to this room in uh, the release day version of the game having zero required trainers. Yeah, that there was fun. sure was. You used to be able to open your menu while, uh, like, while you push the strength folder and basically trainers can't see you. So you could chain together three of them um, and skip all three of the trainers. Man, there were some, like, some of the strats we had super early on were, like, really fun. Like, but, skipping hey, a few trainers here and there. The sunny side up one sunny side was, up was the, the one everyone was just all in on it. They're like, find out what step the egg hatches on. You could also set your date to, like, an increased egg speed hatching day. I don't think I still do, but I had a save file five steps away from sunny side up for the longest time. Man, this game was so broken, and it will be broken later in the marathon. Hey, it will. I think cheating is glitching, and vice versa. Oh, that HP is real bad. Yeah, so there's one fight in Victory Road that could ever... So, you'll notice that we um, have the Legendary and haven't switched to it. Um, basically... Kadabra actually does better against all these fights than the Legendary does, and that's true for both games. Um, but in addition, the Legendary has the ability Pressure, um, which is going to trigger every time it enters battle. So even if the Dialga could take out every single fight without any setup, it still would be better for us to use Kadabra because uh, we don't have that Pressure text. Now, the downside is there's one fight that Kadabra kind of struggles with. Um, it's so awkward, but it's such Dialga a bad doesn't fight. do any better unfortunately yeah. dialga doesn't do much better palkia doesn't do much better um and so the strategy is usually to uh sort of click, do what you click, can click, with Kadabra. <laughs> click psychic five times and hope you don't die in the process yeah uh, it's not game changing to die because we do have revives but you can just essentially lose a lot of time yeah it's just one fight and all these other fights are just one hit ko's like easy just no big deal at all Oh, uh, and of course, I got stuck on a one tile gap uh, in my normal spot there. It's it's real weird. You see, like I was holding straight up and it just you can't walk through it because the game just pincers you into saying you are not 100.0% flush on this tile. Try again. Didn't just use D-pad from the start of V-Red. <laughs> got the good well, we gum on all the walls. We, we saw how well that went for me. True. Shots to this Staraptor not having Sturdy. <laughs> or our Focus Sash. <laughs> not, fo <laughs> not foreshadowing at all now, are we? Took me a second to realize what you were saying. I was like, what do you mean? The Golem <laughs> later does have Sturdy. Oh, wait, you're talking about Staraptor. <laughs> There's, a, there's two Focus Sashes in this game, I just realized. Yep. Man, that's annoying. There are. 
Remember when Lucian having light clay was like the biggest pain in the neck ever? When driving brick break into the run? <laughs> or actually getting defog because it was required. Yeah. Did I ever mention that I actually adore the music in this game, and it's still a damn shame that speedruns are musicless? Yeah. Especially, like, the credits music, too. Like, that should oh, at least so be on. Why are the credits silent? <laughs> in the, even, like, the if you have the music off, the start screen is silent, too. Alright, let's see mm -hmm. if I can do the glitch. Nope. Wait, this would invalidate the whole run. It would. I don't think I'm gonna PB, though, so... Fair enough. I can go for the second fastest glitch time in the run <laughs> if I would have succeeded in the marathon. Yeah, if you're frame perfect there, you can hit the A button on the water and skip the trainer. It's like the it's the only glitch that isn't fully patched out. However, it is a lot more difficult to hit than it used to be. Like it used to just be super easy. You just click A when you landed and it was done. If you can mash it. Uh... Is it is this game 60 FPS or 30? 30. 30. Okay, yeah. So if you can mash at 30 FPS, uh, you would be guaranteed to get this skip. Shout out to Turbo. Uh, Turbo at 20 Hertz does not guarantee it. <laughs> yeah, it would be 60. Yeah, we verified that. At 20 Hertz. Yeah. Did it? Did it? You, uh, Etiquette? Didn't you like try like a 5 Hertz? in the mashing and it looks faster than 20 hertz on yeah, turbo. It, if you do nothing different, 5 hertz mashing is faster in this game than, yeah, than 10 you, or 20. You can only match way. every other frame, right? Well, it's also to do with the way that the text boxes like progress. So in, uh, in a game like Sword and Shield, um, all you have to do is like hold down one of the buttons and it will make the text go faster. Um, so the text moves at like four characters per frame. Um, but if you're holding down a button, it moves to eight characters per frame. In this game, the same is true, but you have to start holding that button during the text box and yeah, not like let go of another pops button. Up. Yeah. And so if you just like are holding down a button and just mashing wildly, it won't actually give you the faster text speed. Um, you have to like constantly reapply your held button. And so like, the way I do it is kind of weird. I basically just alternate between two buttons and hold it down for a little bit of time. But if you turbo at like five hertz, it's actually better than turboing as fast as possible. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's just like you just kind of let it go like this, uh, where you like alternate left and right, um, but leave a little bit of a gap so you're not like holding down both at the same time. Yeah. Very unintuitive. This, is, this, by the way, is the weird psychic five times and hope you get it. Uh, the Tentacruel is a one shot. The Golem has Sturdy and the Empoleon is a Steel type. So, yeah, we just kind of hope we don't get like Heavy Slam or Earthquake. Sandstorm's actually best case scenario here. Uh, and I got it, I got Sandstorm. So the fight is, I'm now very, very, very likely to not die. If you get Earthquake or Heavy Slam, you're at like half HP, and then the Empoleon can use Brine, and that pretty much kills you from there. Uh, or Metal Claw, or Aqua Jets. <laughs> or Swords Dance and Aqua Jets is the possible combinations of this fight. I was just thinking about how different this run would be if this cadaver came with Magic Guard instead of Synchronize. <laughs> Yep. Also, if it was modest instead of quiet. Oh, man. 431 IV so special attack, so like it should be. If it was just the candy floss, if it had modest 15. 15s across the board, it would change the run. Not, yeah. not drastically, but like. Candy route would be completely different, probably. At least, well, you would maybe skip all the calciums or get more, because maybe it would hit even more ranges. Yeah. 
probably skip at least the snow route one. The other ones might still be necessary. I'm excited for Brilliant or Diamond and Shining or Pearl <laughs> to come out. Yeah. Where they fix uh <laughs> fix the cadaver trade. Yeah, why does it have all the funky, very mediocre stats? Like nine defense, eleven special attack. It's it's awkward. If it was a set, like, because old games used to have a set nature and maybe, like, one set IV, and then, like, I'm thinking about, like, Cha in Ultra Moon, right? Uh -huh. It's it's brave. It's always brave. It always has 31 attack, but then everything else is random. And then in Generation 8, they made it so all of the stats are just the same. Like, the, the candy floss is always the same nature, always the same IVs. Yeah, it's weird that the, like, the Why is... IVs look random, but they're... Yeah. They're, they're set it's it's if you i don't think we ever said what they all were but like it is 21 it's 28 hp 10 attack 9 defense 11 special attack 3 special defense and 31 speed they're all different they're just random ass numbers <laughs> okay so what happened sorry i'm getting word uh directly from the pokemon company here oh, okay they're playing darts uh right <laughs> before they did all the trade Pokemon in this game, and they just took their scores from that Darts game for each of the IVs. All right, this makes sense. Yeah. This explains so much about this game. <laughs> and don't ask how they got 31 with one Dart. Nice. It almost it almost makes me wonder if it's supposed to be random, but they somehow like set the random seed beforehand by accident or something like the because the 31 speed it could be that it was always supposed to be quiet with 31 speed and then it was supposed to be random everything else but like something is messed up and it's you're essentially like always rng manipulating it yeah something like, like that's that. the only thing i could think of shout out to this berry fights uh my least favorite fight because i lost a 318 run to this fight that's epic on a turn that I actually should have healed on, because you shouldn't be risking two crits, you should only be risking one. Um, and it's no different heading into the E4. So this is the only turn right now that I could get crit and die on. Uh, every other turn, well, pause on that one because I got rain dance on that turn. <laughs> yeah, so uh, because of pressure, it's more optimal to just PP stall this fight. Um... So, just waiting till all three of the close combats are gone, basically. So this was the turn I got crit on and lost my 318. Um, and it's the last turn he can use close combat on. But being at this health going into the first E4 battle does not matter. So I have made sure to... And the notes are like... Never, <laughs> literally never risk that ever again. The only thing that you're losing is basically four menu inputs in the bag. Yeah, because I have to flip over to heal and then flip back to finish setting up. So this is the Star Raptor that has the Focus Sash. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, but it only gets three cracks at close combat, and that's it. The notes after this fight are like heal to forty or something. <laughs> uh, mine say heal if can't survive three bug buzzes. That number is fifty-four. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but um, if you it is actually, Bug Buzz can uh, drop your special defense, though, it so can. it can do a little bit more. Yeah, I just finished running the numbers. If you get triple spit drop and triple crit, you do die. Okay. So I have triple crit with two spit drops. Is that going to include a level up that I'm going to get, maybe? Yeah, that does include <laughs> level up. I, um, my, my notes for the Arcanine Drillbur route in, in shield have on the Kabu fight, it it tells you how much damage that you can take from the Scent Scorch, and I'm like, but you literally cannot need to know this, because if you got, you take three quick attacks from the Ninetales, and if every single one of them crits, it still can't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you shout sure out to that? Barry, though, for switching his Quick Claw to the Empoleon, so it can attack us on that turn. Yeah, screw you, Barry. I don't like you too. 
What's it go okay. for? Did he get like flash cannon or something? Um, get... He's got metal claw and brine. Uh, brine can be a problem if you're below half HP. Um, but it could, I mean, it could get you to the point where I might have to heal for Aaron. Uh, but welcome yeah. to the E4, where unlike in Shining Pearl, where each E4 member gets a little bit more difficult, for us it's kind of the opposite, save for uh, save for Aaron. Aaron is also just, again, like like what Shen said, it's free asterisks. I would need to get crit and special defense dropped like every single time. Uh, otherwise, you don't even have to heal into this fight. And then our fights actually go very dangerous, kind of dangerous, not as dangerous, and then free asterisks again. Yeah. It's a um, sandwich with delicious bread and garbage meat. <laughs> Remember sandwiches. It will be important tomorrow night. <laughs> it very will be. The, this is going to be on the tests. Uh, so Aaron almost always goes for light screen here. Uh, though he cannot go for Toxic because we are a Steel type. So that is one of the differences of the Brilliant Diamond run. Yeah, Palkia, one of the main reasons why Palkia is a little bit better than, uh, I almost said Kyogre, <laughs> than um, the Dialga here is because um, Dialga has Flash Cannon as its, as its best move. And Flash Cannon is a very good move. Um, but Palkia gets Surf, and Surf is given to us during the story, so it's literally free for us to teach. Um, it's so good. Yeah, and so having Stab Surf, Water is just an amazing type. Um, just makes it a bit nicer. It's also, uh, as you're going to see mostly on the next fight, um, a lot safer of a Pokemon, just because uh, there are quite a few things that don't like Steel types in this elite. Yeah, yes. it's weird that Steel is usually a very good defensive typing, and it's just, yeah, it goes out the window for Sinnoh's E-Force specifically. Yeah, it's weird that, well, Water and uh, Dragon is uh, almost perfect defense. It only gets hit super fast by, like, Fairy and uh, Dragon. Dragon. And obviously yep, yep. Freeze Dry, but that's not even on the E-4. Um, but yeah, like, if Freeze Dry was on one of the leads, like, Palkia would be a lot scarier. But there's just so many moves that hit Steel Dragon for super effective that just also happen to be on the lead Pokemon. So Bertha is, Bertha coming up is the ground type gym leader. Ground obviously super effective. We're going to see a lot of Earthquake. There are three turns that we can get crit killed on. Uh, two of them are from one of my favorite Pokemon, the Quagsire. Be nice, Quagsire. Uh, also, I like to show off one of my favorite menus of the game. And it's called Ether and Healing by Mashing A. Okay, you ready for this? Those are my favorite menus. Does this include saving? Yes. <laughs> oh, in fact, includes saving. It's it's so smooth that the max ether just gets used, and then the full restore is you're just continuing to mash A. I have to like tell myself it's okay, and that the menu isn't gonna screw up and also use my other ether. So yeah, right, here's my boy, the Quagsire. With 31 defense, are you good to just do the plus two setup, or do you still have to go plus four here? Uh, I'm good to just do plus two. Okay. I will have to plus four on Flint because my HP is not high enough. That makes sense. Yeah, so you can kind of change your setups based off the stats, uh, and this is one of those fights that that's definitely the case. Oh, uh, so that is... It's a right, pretty gonna... high roll. That was a That was a pretty nasty high roll. I didn't like that. I'm gonna play that safe. 58. Yeah, it goes yeah, for the. I forgot to X speed, so it did this a little out of order, but it's fine. Uh, you must always heal we'll here win. because the golem will get a turn because it has sturdy. Yeah, we used to teach stealth rocks to the yeah. bread sticks, but not anymore. All right, Quagsire was nice to us today, save for that one highish roll that I played around. Yeah, you would have lived on two. The it you, did fifty six, and you healed. Yeah, on 50, fi fifty six is my fifty six is my number. Yep, exactly. Uh, I think sixty is the high roll. So because of rock polish, he gets a turn. That's pretty normal to live in like the twenties. Crit would kill. So that is Bertha. So we have successfully dodged the three turns of I could gut have gotten critical hits. Also using Slash to avoid the sturdy animation. 
Sure also, for PP okay. management, we cannot afford to Dragon Pulse to break Sturdy because True, she will yeah. heal and then we'll have to Dragon Pulse again. And we do not have enough PP to do that. You'll see me do that in the next fight to break Focus Sash. Yeah. Also not using uh, Flash Cannon, even though it's super effective on all these Pokemon, because super effective attacks. Yeah, also Wish Cash exists in this fight. And that would be not very effective anyways. And Wish Cash kind of bulky, if I remember correctly. It's a bit bulky, yeah. Yeah, I think that one in particular is max HP, max Spadef. So this was definitely the scariest fight because it's it's the fight that I could have got crit three times. Flint and Lo Flint is there's one turn that's like scary, but you can lose a lot of time to Flint. Flint's pro this is the big difference between the two versions is this fight this fight in particular. Um, because. Shining Pearl will get rid of the Rapidash, which has Flame Charge and Hypnosis and is really annoying, but Dialga cannot set up on the second Pokemon because Flint isn't so much the Fire-type E4 member as he is the Fighting-type E4 member. Yeah. Not much better for Dialga, because his second Pokemon coming out will be Lopunny, and Lopunny has High Jump Kick, and that is... It, we ain't setting up on that. <laughs> We will we will eat the uh, this fight is kind of slow and trolly on this rapid ash. Rapid ash can't do a whole lot of damage to us, especially since I'm going to use two X defense. Uh, but is holding the wide lens and has hypnosis, so it's like a seventy percent chance for hypnosis to work. Uh, and this is one of those fights where I only have to X speed once, thankfully. So since it's using flame charge, I can't outspeed it. So we're just going to hope it doesn't use Hypnosis uh, again. Uh, and if it does and succeeds, I'm just going to basically just wear it out. So we'll Flame Charge here. And now I will pray it doesn't use Hypnosis or miss. And it missed! Hey, ooh, that's good. So, in that case, if you go to plus two defense instead of plus four, you can save yourself a turn, but you must have Hypnosis miss. Otherwise, you won't have enough HP to survive the Infernape, which has close combat and Mach Punch. So, there is, it's literally adding up three moves together. I need to survive a Flame Charge, a Close Combat, and a Mach Punch combined uh, before I start attacking. And at plus two, you only get one turn in most cases. And it was marginal at my HP. Uh, at plus four, it's fine. You just can, you only have to be like 105 HP and then you survive that. Barring a crit, of course. So the dangerous turn is here because the Infernape is holding the Focus Sash. So like the Golem, I'm going to slash break it not use Dragon Pulse, because I only have one left. And that is Flint. That is Flint the safe slash fast way, because I did dodge a Hypnosis. Alright, sweet. And now for the one fight that is safer as Dialga, but is not faster as Dialga. Because <laughs> remember, yeah. Stab Surf is still incredibly good. Uh, and that is no exception. We get another one of these Mash A menus. Yeah, so the, the Lucian here has a Mr. Mime as its lead. Um, and Mr. Mime is now a fairy type, um, unlike in the original. So... Uh, it has Dazzling Gleam. Dazzling Gleam does quite a bit. So this is in Shining Pearl, the quintessential please don't crit me fight. Um, and, you know, T-Pat's already gone through that one for Brilliant Diamond, which was the birth of fight. Yeah. If I get crit here, it's like, man, but is typically not fatal unless it's like the very last turn. Uh, I still X Special Defense here because if I don't, I'll have to heal anyways. So I'm actually not using... Uh, any different number of turns. Uh, the gimmick here is that the Mime is the screen setter, but it's holding an item called Light Clay, 
So it actually lasts eight turns and not five. So instead, I have to set up to plus six. And because of the ability uh, filter, is it? Yeah, yeah uh, I think it is filter, not positive. If it's filter, if I'm not at perfect uh, special attack, the mime is actually a range at plus six with the screen setup. It's kind of annoying when it like lives on red HP and you're like, mm, why did yeah, you die? Filter, I just checked. Remember, I am using a super effective move on him. But thankfully, these screens will drop uh, before the Bronzong is out. So Flash Cannon, while not very effective against the Steel type, uh, is still plus six, metronome boosted, no screen, and does a lot more damage. Uh, as I learned here, we don't outspeed the Alakazam. The best it can do is Psychic us for about 31 points of damage. It might try to use uh, Future Sight, but we will never see Future Sight. It would proc after the Bronzon is defeated. If you're wondering, by the way, it's 252 HP with Filter. Yeah. So max HP filter. It's a very bulky mon. Yeah, and that Alakazam yeah, is the fastest defense. thing. Yeah. Yeah. The Alakazam is the fastest thing in the Elite Four, so. Um, yeah, it's max speed, timid. So very we fast. Choose to, yeah, we choose to lose half a turn to it instead of using an extra X speed, which would be a full turn. Mm hmm. All right, sweet. Now, Cynthia is pretty cool. I have definitely not died in practice to Cynthia before. It's impossible to die. It is, it is impossible. I do need to heal since I am at 80 whatever HP. If you're above 100 HP, you can go into this fight no problem. One of the best themes in the game, though. Oh, we get to hear it, right? We do get to hear it. <laughs> it's so weird. No way. I love this theme so much. It's so it's so good in uh was it Brawl or Ultimate? Cynthia's theme's yeah. so good in that. Hey look, it's a spirit tomb. It used to have no weaknesses. Now it's only weak to fairy. And using 3x specials in front of its face with no <laughs> counterplay. <laughs> that's a that's a pretty big weakness. Yeah, it's other weaknesses, you know, being baited into uh, sucker punch. Yeah. Yep. So that is primarily the reason why I didn't bother saving Drop my inputs, because it'll take me three turns to set up with one X speed and two X special attacks, which will be the three sucker punches it has. And the fight is won from there. Yeah, you Now, if you're, if you're slow speed, if I'm at that 89 or less, that's when I have to uh, use one more X speed. It does get one extra turn to uh, hit me. Uh, it can crit you and deal about one... 140 to 150-ish damage. So it's not perfectly safe. Uh, in practice, the AI went totally rogue. If Shadow Ball gets a defense drop, usually you just X special defend again. But I didn't get a defense drop, and it still was using Dark Pulse. And then it crit me with and it crit me with Dark Pulse and I died in a practice run. Yeah, you must have been like zero special 31 defense and Yeah. I think it was a range because she'll do the the, the pre-damage calc rolls yep. and I guess rolled higher on Dark Pulse twice, and one of them eventually crit. So that was that was really cool. But this was pretty standard. What was your, uh, Etika, what was your GDQ final time? Oh, jeez. Uh... <laughs> I think I got like a beat. Yeah, you definitely have a beat. It was like a 340. Yeah, aside from that one spinner that I absolutely, absolutely thrash messed up. Uh, this yeah. ended up not being too bad. Um, the usual dangerous fights went smoothly, that being, like, Bertha, Wake, Byron. Um, I think I just got... What, did I get crit in a weird spot or something? I don't remember. Berry 2 went well for some reason. But yeah, so this is the Brilliant Diamond side. Uh, again, only like the last six fights are any different. Um, it is actually a pretty fun run. You know, if you can get over just the, you know, the, the environment friction. 
Um, and Kadabra's a really cool route. I, I really dig uh, the Kadabra into Dialga or into Palkia. Um, would very much recommend it. There is a there is a tool you can use to listen to music while putting the music off, uh, which makes it a more enjoyable experience as well. And um, yeah, and we'll see this what tomorrow night, right? The the glitch yeah. run. Yeah, so be sure to uh, to follow myself on Twitch, uh, follow Shen Etiquette and Nerd on Twitch, uh, and also see us tomorrow for the uh, part two of the Brilliant Diamond Run. Three twenty nine in game time eight, terrible, especially for music on. And that is time. Very nice. And very nice GG T Pet, very thank very, very nice run. Yeah, thank you very much. And we get to hear the credit music. Heck yeah! <laughs> because the music's on. <laughs> but yeah, um, I kind of said thanks to my commentators. Like, thanks for being <laughs> here and uh. Being a fun crew as always, and yeah, thanks yeah, for having just, us. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no problem. yeah thank yeah, you so and, much, everybody. That was a really wonderful run to watch. And for now, we are going to do a quick trans transition, and then we are going to jump into Pokemon White Two by Joy. Look, look, it's Drifloons. I know May's not here, but it's Drifloons. Whoa, Drifloons! <laughs> Drifloons. That should count for round two. Seeing them there. They really should. Mm -hmm. But yeah, thanks everybody for hanging out with us. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me on the marathon. And of course, there's like so many amazing runs that everybody should be watching this weekend. <laughs>